course, Cowboys in the Giants here and the Saints and Giants in New, in, in New York. Both games, this is about emotion. Michael, this is the 14th time that the Cowboys and Redskins have played on Monday night. You know this rival. Why an intensity different for this game than any other? But besides it being just a great rival, you just mentioned it. The flip that I am part of going in the Ring of Honor at halftime. So you're talking about a lot of great memories of the past mixed with a lot of great hope for the president because the Cowboys do have an opportunity to beat the Washington Redskins and go to no and this league Tom Tino right now division will be huge. A lot of emotion here in this stadium but maybe even more emotion in the Meadowlands in New York. You think about last week the New Orleans is embraced by the Carolina Panthers fans. That's going to happen to the Saints everywhere they play but maybe even more so in New York. 9-11 somehow will always be tied Hurricane Katrina and that disaster and I think that for the foreseeable future at least this year and it's I say it here in this stadium the Saints are now America's team. You can always tell it's focused by how many turnovers they forced. And last week, the Saints on the road forced four turnovers yes. the Carolina yeah. Panthers. Very large night tonight. A lot of things going on. Let's queue up the date exactly what, when, and how. The Jackson Saints game kicks up at 7.30 Eastern on ABC. Then at 9 Eastern for most country. Game moves over to ESPN, and the Redskins Cowboys will come on ABC at 9 Eastern. The Orange is the only team in the league this season that will play 16 games on 10 different fields none of them they're normal home digs tonight they're in the Meadowlands. dan patrick is there too for an emotional evening dan all right Stuart. the nfl is doing all can to make it feel like a home game for the saints ron jaworski is joining me we were just talking about it. it's an odd dynamic here with the fans because normally and you play in this stadium these giant fans very vocal it, it, it's an eerie type of feel that you they're not sure if they're supposed to be typical giant fans or not yeah there's no cursing going on they're actually <laughs> here just watching the players warm up you know and uh, but i don't feel talk to a lot of the saints because many times on monday countdown we talk the x's and the o's of the game but you know for the northern saints it's a game of heart it's a game of passion it's a game of enthusiasm this is a team that is highly focused not on their individual accolades but they're focused on representing an entire region of the country they're excited about what they're doing they are focused on being Ball games not for themselves but for a lot of people that love them and bring some joy in their lives all right jaws alongside of me for uh, this countdown the uh, meadowlands uh, we'll get back to jaws in a moment as for the game itself let's bring in sal palantonio he's uh, down the lines some headlines the saints sal well dan it's a very emotional and historic night here at the meadowlands the new orleans saints flies atop john stadium and in the west end zone saints logo is painted over where the giants logo would be and tonight the Saints will be in their black home uniforms and the giants will be in their new white road youths but the seats know to a man who exactly they're playing for tonight so you hope you're able to bring joy as far as just to be able to go out and play well you know and just give them a lift that they normally have on a day-to-day -day basis with a football game so far feelings is that it's really just about us together closer at a group of men you know moving to new orleans and then going to california and then you know, you know, the high school, you know, at the Alamo home, you know, moving around. Everybody experiences everybody's family's happy this place. You know, missing their wives, kids, and just kind of things that you can share together in common. And they're going through together, and also just knowing that that together we're playing for some that's greater than ourselves. For the Giants, one important injury of a pro defensive end, Michael Strahan, had back spasms flared up over the weekend. He saw higher actor, according to Ernie Corsi, the Giants GM, Strahan is fun, Dan, and will play tight. You tell more Sal little later on during this countdown appearance at the Meadowlands. Now to George Smith. He's in Houston. Where several hurricane evacuees are going to be during the same tonight. George, set the scene for us. Evacuees, including St. fans, are finding temporary and permanent homes. We're more than four out here last weekend when we were over at the Astrodome and the Reliance Center complex next door. That number is now down to 1,300. That situation is improved. In time, another potential problem. Top of Storm Rita is expected to hit Galveston sometime later this week. Galveston up 50 miles southeast of here, so we're bracing to see what happened there. In time here at Champ, we're expecting a huge tint of Saints fans. Last weekend, a, ma a major crowd here. In fact, more Saints fans, Texans fans. So they're expecting a crowd to gather here within the next hour or so tonight. And one final word here, Dan, just inside doorway they're collecting clothes and food anyone who comes here tonight donate that will get 10 percent off their bills so that's the situation dan back to you jordan live in houston thank you george the rare monday doubleheader serving as a backdrop for her Saint katrina relief after the nfl string a telethon from abc times studio new york city tonight chris berman and robin Hubbard are the host guys all right dan thank you very much here at uh NFL Hurricane Relief Effort Central, if you will. In Times Square, you can see some great football players. John Elway, wow. John Steve Lynch, Art Shell, Willie Lanier, Taylor from the Jets, the Jones from the Eagles, and we have we have Robin Ross. 
You and I used to football together all the time uh, on for NFL A little show time. in a prime time. And prime. They used to get things kicked all the time. Change. Right. Nothing's, cha Nothing's changed well, after all this time. A little but, bit has but changed. The, yes, a lot has changed, but also the it's at, home, at the Meadowlands. Yeah, but don't you think there'll be a huge uh, New York Jets? They should right. do just off a few years old. to cheer. I expect they'll get a here. Welcome the Saints, even though it's, you know, the Giants crowd. It is, and the Giants, of course, are, are, are at home, and here they have the Saints coming into town. Ian Manning, you know, he was looking forward yep. to playing in the Superdome. He's going to be at home in the Saints. You know, they went last week. The way it buoyed the spirits of everyone down south, they're in the shelters watching, and, you know, you asked what a role can sport play. I can just give them a, a respite for a little moment. That's what we're here tonight to do. I know you're speaking of your home folks. Absolutely. In it's good to talk both of you. I love it. We have a lot coming up all during the doubleheader tonight, but Stu, hey. Run games, still games. <laughs> I had the Saints games too. Boom. Still ahead, the Pats and the Rome side of revenge. Some more salt added to Dante Culpepper's wounds. And McNabb finds love in the arms of T. Twice! Coach barely survived. Week two highlights coming. Marvin tells us how often it is real around week win. And QB controversy and confusion in D.C. has T. All jacked up. It's going down for my Troy. Emmett being out of it for some old school. Oh, like this what we want to get. Has everybody been out of the Hurricane Katrina has ravaged Mississippi, Louisiana, and Alabama. Places that we call home. Now Monday, rolls on. Are you ready for the hitting of American football? The Red Battle Ray John. Hello there, everyone. Welcome to ESP Soccer Net Fast Studio. Me, Derek, and for Connect your high speed EG. Call 1 8 Net Zero. Get it at netzero.com. And for Nera, suck on the inside. Talk on the inside. There are more than 6 billion people in the world, and nobody in the face of the earth has ever from yards in it. And Emmett Smith will join us later on Monday countdown. You know, here in Dallas, we're tempted to say that this is the real one of those key rivals in sports. But as skins coach Joe Gibbs can see, in order to arrive, both teams after viewing some games, Cowboy beat down the skin team of the last fifth game. That's what game for season tries to start a bit when he called Cowboy fans, quote, the ugliest people in the world. Close. Now, he later apologized, but oh, that time damage was done. <laughs> <laughs> Here, Dallas is can see. <laughs> The Cowboys are starting their fourth quarterback, Troy Aikman, Ring of Honor. Tonight. Redskins putting theirs, Mark will back the line. After just three offensive series, Joe Gibbs has decided Brunette and not Pat Rams should be the Redskins quarterback. I talked to Brunel a few minutes ago. His personal has been greatly improved. This offense is much more advanced than it was when he was removed from the starting lineup early last season. Now, as for the quarter approaching, if something happens tonight, we're told it'd be Pat Ramsey who come in and finish game. But Brunette were to be out for any substantial period of time with an injury, they would get trans in immediately and the rook first round, Jason Hamble, ready to be the Redskins quarterback. As for the Cowboys, Bill Parles has been motoring through Bledsoe about the importance of avoiding negative plays. This game will test so awareness and result. I talked to Big Boy, the defense coordinator of the Redskins, and he coached Bledsoe for two years in Bowie. I know thing about him that might be valuable that other coaches will know. He'll try to exploit that night he said for best when we attack and play aggressive. So he, they'll probably blitz Stewart about 70% of the time. I did we the knowledge. There were skip players on Cowboy Boy Marcus Ware this week. All the food on the telephone, and they warned him about the Yo, can the skins talk junk now? Uh, now, why would you want to fire up DeMarcus Ware? Why would you want to get more pumped up? He's going to be for skins. I think when you get these two teams, here's what the Cowboys are now. Molded in, in the Bill Parcells. Big defensively up front. Can all run and for DeMarcus Ware. A great addition to that defense. And on offense, they run the ball. They have the quarterback position cup. And at least one of the reasons is one. Now, Mike, no, 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 uh, no, I don't know. Not is a, but you got three. The one out there. When I look at Ransky, what I see is pretty deep, pretty rough, but the quarterback position has to be safe. I was at Coach Gibbs, watch quarterback play for the court, and this side to make change after train camp, that position, is it able? No, it's not safe, Tom, but you mentioned it. You said it was less than quarter. It was training camp. When you talk to the ice Redskins camp, and I just talked to a couple, they will tell you Mark Britt had a much better camp. Joe Gibbs, I believe, they play him, but felt that they played Ramsey, but the guy that watched, well, you guys can say he's the quarterback. Up. Joe wasn't doing a lot of rest late in preseason. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Out. To help restore that skin, Steve Gibbs had Joe Jacoby, 
Joe Dobbin, Charles Mill, a lot of the old reds get to talk to current reds and address the importance of winning games and just the importance of eating everything. Sue and Blue, my especially Sue Blue, things have a bit star on the helmet. So, uh, no leaving their seats. No by halftime, I'd be because ever be playing up to the boy victory. Try Emmett would join like, right here for some racing right ahead. And time for this year's bench come effort to make Dante's explosion. That's how it is to Grunny Valley Parker. Breaking NFL news go anywhere. The story of Ogaba on the History Channel. How the hell are we going to do this? Restore Australian heritage buildings in a History Channel exclusive. Revival Saving History with host Steve Liebman. A lot of dedication, a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of expertise. All together to preserve history. Tune to the Burles Australia's first rugby club on Saturday at Tuffy. The members of Sydney University football played in the first game of rugby in Australia. Sam 1666, City of London, Bertha Grand in four days. Was it on a baker's negance or an act of art? The Australian Emmy Aries for field actives, Graham Breaking new research in some of the most questions of us battles. This Halloween, it's his house of earth. It'll be the Australian exclusive Bram Stoke. People who believe in Amhat in Romania. Know the story through October on the History Channel. Working home in one of the experiences of my life. We just are exposed to uh, the most extraordinary people. Went home over the past five years has been complete and utter satisfaction. Been so many places that probably wouldn't want to myself. In meeting people you to learn about different ways things, different ideas. The home has made that happen for me. See a new series of Home Do You. Here's up to 28 exclusive of the last Star Channel. Open right to the world sports with ESPN. Of the consultation of sports Australians and comes loud and clear with outreach of the Tully teams from North America. Hannah races men's baseball, red hot, and you have the seat in the house with ESPN's expansion of rich baseball. Are you ready for football? The NFL on ESPN. Catch each and every for the season. Live coverage of the rough and rugged world of football. Number one last week and the good men's profoundly boot with each of the ages of games in Denver. And the women players show they have to compete in dub in A action. Not all of the PA at the looks will let you battle in the Champions Tour. Right at the year on the FN. Welcome back to Monday Night Count. Lots of corner going to be in the cover. Sports Illustrated throwing a great touchdown. Aaron Brooks from the cover, hugging a team very emotional. Cover after their emotional win over the Atlanta Panthers. We'll be back to the men in just a minute. Right now, we're down Monday night. Down, checking out. We can hide. First quarter, Chris Panthers. Tidy human. Because we're under pressure, they'll see Ruck hacking the ball. Just have a fix it up. It was right after the pace that scored off the interception. Now you... to say Andy could seven and anybody about showdown Patriots and Oxford on Monday Night Football member seven. Chris Morton joins us now from NFL News. With some great news out of Houston. What's going on down there? That's right. They have five offense coordinator Chris Palmer, Texans. And we all spoke to Dom Capers, head coach, Friday. He told me, I asked him about this, you know, there's not a time panic. The one who this Capers vision, their way. Joe Henry, the line coach, now the offensive coordinator of Texans. Pan was Cape's offensive coordinator when the two were together with the Carolina Panthers. In Minnesota, Mike Ice is a take play call and do from his offensive coordinator, Steve Lone, only all coaches offensive line. It may not be as simple as being gone. The line prop and touch on a one contract was not really able to replace Scott Lehan, who onto the Dolphins as their coordinator. Then in for no size here, Willie Parker is a fleet number one, the starter at run back for the presidential power said. So that's Jerome Bettis and Staley. Move over to your, your carries, but it is Park Show, the young second year running back from North Carolina. So also, Mortem, how did the NL respond last Monday night? pre game brawl between Eagles and Falcons. We were right there. We saw it all. How did the NL react to it? They have implemented a new policy for the rest of the season. That is the 10 yards between the 45 yard line. It's on neutral zone, on no fault zone, whatever you want to call it. Officials will be stationed there in the pregame. Anybody other than punters, kickers who want into that area will be warned to get at If it happens again, unsportsmanlike conduct penalties. All right, we appreciate the knowledge, man. Still ahead, going back to the Meadowlands, the Section Giants. After a very tough freshman year, Eli Manning got a soft season off on the right foot. But what was Eli's secret going into week one? 
Jaws opens the fifth ball, Seville's the end, or exactly what did Eli do? Plus, a huge, very emotional week one win. This is looked to make it in a row to start a most trying seat. Talk to head coach Haslam. All that more straight ahead. Monday night countdown. And how about them Cowboys? The big three will be right here. Nice job. That's way to compete. Two in a row. Hop it in. Hurricane Katrina ravaged Mississippi, Louisiana. From Texas, Dadian in Irving, Texas, it's the Redskins Cowboys on ESPN's Monday Night Football. ESPN presents Monday Night Football. The Washington Redskins and the Dallas Cowboys get it again. From Texas State, Mark, with you for now. Mark, ESPN CEOs, as always, will send it out. Al Michaels, John Madden for the call at Texas Stadium. Well, both teams cut off week one victories. The Dallas Cowboys won at San Diego. A lot of from Julius Jones. Carried it 26 times. It would been like 93 yards out of the backfield for the Cowboys. In his second season, Jones, very promising. Runner. In his 13th season, Bird with the Cowboys group. That's a very impressive debut at San Diego. Three touchdown passes with Harry and interception completed. Seven five for seven of his passes. Did you what Coach Parcells would have wanted him to do? Come in, rush him. Not hit too often for Harry accurately. And that is exactly what he hit on 1824 for 226 yards. That's nine and a half yards per attempt. And that is outstanding. A quarterback rating for that game of 1.3.4. That's too much better. Then that's a suspicious beginning for Bledsoe as the starting quarterback. Andy D. Now the Cowboys playing their home opener after starting out on the West Coast with a nice lead 24 victory against the San Diego Chargers. As for the Redskins, well, they did get into the end zone in their week one game against Chicago. They won it. But anyway, a lot of it can be attributed to the running of Clinton Portis. Or didn't get in the end zone. For 100 yards once again. Remember the Skins came over to Washington and a trade prior to the 2004 season. Came over from Denver. 100 yard seasons with the Broncos. And one carries for 21 yards in that one three against the Bears. Average for six yards per carry. Love to get into the end zone though. One bust 41 yard run against Chicago. This is the 91st all time meeting between Redskins and the Cowboys. Getting back in 196. We're working away to the only kickoff on ESPN. The start of the night football on ESPN. The Skins and the Cowboys go ahead for the first time. But it's special. Earlier on Monday night, the Saints playing a home game at a Giants team. The New Orleans franchise is split by Hurricane Katrina. Can't play in the Superdome. So they're playing Giants at Giants Stadium. Aaron Earloring, Tiki Barber punched in for a touchdown. The Giants did nothing. Later on, Manning looking for Barber in the back. Be a little middle screen here. Works to perfection. Team up Giants. Yes, we thought it was going to be a pause. Aaron Hooks. 
the one you touch that strike to Joe or one of the not accounted for six foot extra point that old the Saints within 14 steps since then T Barber has added a second rushing touchdown and third touchdown overall on the night and it is 21 to 7 still in the second quarter that game kicked off of an hour and a half ago Stars will kick off in just a moment on ESPN. The Reds and the Cowboys coming to you live, Dallas. Night, but for Monday Night Football, Al Michaels, John Madden, Mr. Boy. Done. Best of, obviously, it's long season. You feel like that. It feels like it's a lot of anything like <laughs> seven, oh. yeah, that. Well, and it's stadium with the hole in the room. There's escalation here. It's very still. And very hot, obviously. Here we go. The end of week number two. Tyson Thompson is looking at San Jose State. Maybe the best guy team. No, this is a kicker because John Hall is hurt. Put it in the air. And the Cowboys are taking a seven-yard line. And the Rook Tyson Thompson who has moments in preseason. So that's a 30 second at the dash line. Drew Bledsoe, Washington State. Julius Jones, noted. Keyshawn John, University of Southern California. Great name. Kyle University. Campbell, Tassani. Jason Wood. That's it. Flozo Adams, Michigan State. Larry Williams. Ed Johnson, Wisconsin. Mark Rivera, Penn State. Mark G. State. That made my favorite for the Al Jones. Thompson. From the field line. Here is Julius Holmes. Pick up Popple. We see that. Here's Washington defense. Ronaldo wins. Notre Dame. No, he's good. The rest of that, I'm Joe Salil, Harold Salil, Daniel George, Washington, High School, Mar Marshall, Michigan State, Warren Home, Texas A&M, Fort Harris, Mississippi State, Pearson Prelo, Virginia Tech, Sean Taylor, University of Miami, Sean Springs, the Ohio State University. That deep held the Bears to one touchdown last as one of the potent in the NFL last year. Let's say, Look across to the right side, by Trey Glenn, Glenn, escaped a couple of wooden tackles, has tackled a 39-yard line, Sean Springs was one to almost got on but couldn't it'll be pretty short the one of the interesting matchups going to be Drake Williams the defense coordinator of the Washington Redskins against Drew Blesso who he he, he played for when Greg Williams was a coach of the Bible business Drew said he Greg Williams he knows he's gonna do and Greg Williams says I know I'm Drew Blesso and I know we have to do against him that in turn set at night on foot down one they spent four years of three with Owen Williams they're gonna go here and that is put by the tight end Brett Pierce. Second tight end, and the one has Jason. And actually, he third behind Dan Peebles. So on third and one, a little fake to the back, and then a pass down. I mean, that was a great call. Western was going into five deep of line. That's their short yardage. And then they boot. So they fake to the left. Drew Bledsoe was out of the right. The fake of the run to the left. All linebackers to the side, and the defense linemen, and they were able to get up to this side. Pierce, and it's actually easy with the boys. That's his first reception. First at career. From the 49-yard line on first down. Jones. He is doing the thing that play ball is Sean Payton is going to call the plays for Dassus and head coach. And the quarterback coach and there he's behind Hart. It had always been a sign of mystery with Parsons through the years. Who's calling the plays? You never give it up. And finally, a couple of said, Payton's a guy. He'll call the plays. He does it better than I do. Yeah, that's a bit of a stretch. It's a little for ourselves. Uh, edited that, that Sean Payton's a play call. And I, I think because it's all he asked when you're the coach, you can get anything else. It's that. And it's in seven with wide out the next set. The catch is made, and that'll be enough for a first down as Terry Glenn makes his second catch and rolls out about the three-yard line. That moved the chains for Dallas. That was an interesting formation there for the Cowboys. They had four hit receivers plus Jason, and so they had five receivers and an empty backfield. You see the thing that they've done on these last couple of completions? They're moving through black. 
Greg Williams think that you spot rush him because he's always going to be in the pocket on a spot. Go press it. And Sean Payton are saying, no, we're not. And Drew doesn't have a lot of mobility. Has been sacked over 400 times in his career. This time, a conventional drop back. Great protection. The pass is too high. And Glenn turns around and says, give me a flag. And there is a flag back up at 28-yard line. That's Wall Harris. Grabbed him at about the 20-yard line on the penalty will be left corner for Washington. Thank you, Wall Harris. Illegal run back on defense, number 27. Five-yard penalty. Medic, first down. That just threw timing because he not grabbed him. That could have been a wide thing. Here he is, Wall Harris, right here. You're going to see him down. That double move is going to go in and up. He go in. Harris starts to bite on it. Then as it goes, he had to grab him, or Glenn would have been open. Harris, second 96, Chicago's number one draft choice. So first half, 35-yard line. Winning drop of the game. And Bucks going to get timeout. So timeout taken by Dallas Cowboys with 11.30. Let the opening kid. Cowboys driving. Timeout here. Here's the Sunday on Showtime. Where the Cowboys have the ball. Oh, yeah, I spent a lot of those uh, Mondays, Frank, through the years. It's good to see. It's good to see you just kind of gift. Right, in 174 game that would end. Now that with football. And I'm pretty sure you can First and 10, 30. Yeah. This is Julius Jones, the 34 yard line. Julius Jones was picked in the second round. He his college ball. No Dame, his brother Thomas Jones, who had a big day for the Chicago Bears yesterday and had it with Arizona Tampa Bay. And the Cowboys line herself took a long get him. He hurt the first part of last season, but once he got help, it was tremendous second year, including a fabulous Monday night game at Saddle in the city. Well, how about a three-week period? There were three games he could have bought over 30 times in each game. Now that him in a and and then carried with great effectiveness this game. I was talking to him, and he said, you know, he knows that he's going to be workhorse back in... He'd like to gain a little more weight than when they're too fit in. That's where he liked it. He said, Bill Parcells is way too old. So the weight that he used to make on Saturday was too set. Mom and Dad, Thomas and Eddie were here. Yeah, how about Rob Wow. Yeah, well, Thomas had the second best in the league yesterday. He's showing his hands. The Seahawks have more yardage. Here they go. Third and six, and here's Lit. And they give Jones, and he split that leg as Julius to, to the 21 yard line. Yeah, that's a pretty good idea because Greg Williams knows that Drew Bledsoe is going to be in the pocket or he thinks he's going to be in the pocket. So instead of rushing from the edges, he wants rush up the middle. So what the Cowboys do, they let him rush up, up the middle and then they, they wait off at the inside and run the ball off tackle. And it was very costly if you watch folks happening from the hands because Christian Rilo was the guy who was blitzing. and he has pulled holding his hand ring. Wait a minute. For the walk days, I will say it's a player's hand and wish him good. And someday, I'm gonna do that. I don't know what pride a kid is necessarily. Oh, oh, oh. 
I conduct myself best manner that I can. I, I just try to get them to walk away. If you play class, you ought to lift class. I like no helmets. If they walk involved, I guess I'd want everyone. What are you supposed to do? Nice hand. Nice. Good luck, everybody. See you later. That's what I'm always do. I'm real happy. It's good for you, but good luck to the way. Yes. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> hey, guys, you let them go out there and disconnect back there now. Why do I get this nervous? <laughs> Thanks for the Minnesota Twins. There he goes. Sheffield right to the four. He throws the six in time. Back to play double play. Be sure to watch Melee Baseball on ESPN. Pearson yeah. Halo is the star strong seat over from Buffalo. Of course, that's for Williams' connection. He either pulls a hamstring or comes up here. He's on the back by Matlin. Right there, you see him grab it. They came up middle on the blitz, expect pass, saw the run, went to react to it, and as he was reacting, he pulled up. Five receivers now, nobody in the back behind Bledsoe. He takes it far, no one, and throws to Pierce Price. Other ex Bills played in Buffalo together. Price went to Atlanta to do job there. They let him go, and now boys picked Price up a couple of weeks ago. He was enacted last week, but tonight sees action catches his first pass. Cowboy here. Yeah, and Bill Price was talking about how are we going to get Price in the, in the game, and this is one way. Now they have five receivers in an empty backfield. So as Bill Price will say, the thing we have to worry about there is protection. So if you're reading about protection, you throw that short, quick pass. This is perception as the Dallas score is a one-yard loss. That is swung bound. Witten is over on the sideline, the closest receiver. And the Cowboys, who picked up four first downs on this drive, will now be facing a third and 11. You know, and the Rickens have shown them a kind of defense. They've had a two-man line, three-man line, a four-man line, five-man line. they blitzed side. They've been everything to throw off the rhythm of the Cowboys. And this is really the first time that they've really done it because they wanted to get him into this situation pretty long. And this was what can show them a variety of defense. Giants just heard before half. It's to 110. Giants at half and over the second middle lane. And third and 11 passes behind them. So a good start to drive, had to take time out to show his consternation. They really had his going. The Redskins lose trail, but then they are able to stiffen and for Dallas to anything chip shot empty. Already about a 41-yard field attempt for Jose Cortez. Right, and Drew, so I had to get rid of that one because Sean Springs, the corner, was blitzed right up the middle free. Tony Romo back up four, back to Bledsoe. Will do the whole the 41 yard attempt and over the top of the left upright and no good. Cortez misses, so a nice looking drop for Dallas. Early on was four for down, but then they miss the field goal. And Washington will have it when we come back. Open your eyes to the world of ball with ESPN. Because for his passion of the sports Australians, and it comes loud and clear with our catch of the top league team from North America. The fan race is initially by full of air heart. You have best seat in the house. ESPN's expand coverage of the ball. You need for some small NFL on ESPN. Set you in every week of the season with lock coverage of run, run world American football. Number one draft pick, Andrew Bogut, makes his special debut for the new NBA season begins in November. And the players show drive to compete to win the action. The top dogs of the PA hit the links while legend battling the Champions Tour. Question year round on ESPN. <laughs> A great moment on SPM. It's the big day of racing in America. Not for Indianapolis 500. Zip is a capture of most savage veterans. Zip for a young 20 year old gunning for his first chip bag at the Rickyard at Indianapolis. But Elio Trinebe defied the odds, won the big race, and the catch and legend of Superman born. A celebration of sports memories around the globe. Great moments on ESPN. ESPN Fight Night. Heavyweight WBO Asian Pacific Bill is in his hand. And undefeated Dalton Abregama will do his best to keep it when he faces Friday Ahanya. What day on ESPN? Okay, Robin, 
to 31 yard line is where the Washington Redskins will take over after that missed field goal attempt. County field goal attempt. Dallas had the ball for 12 plays on the opening drive, but nothing to go for it. And now Mark Brunel, the long time Jack will jack our quarterback into Washington last year in a trade. Set of the year behind Patrick Ramsey. Took the one Ramsey got hurt last week. It's his job now. As Clinton Gordon picks up three to the 34. Here's the Washington offense. Mark Brunel, the University of Washington. Clint Borges, the U. Chris Cooley, Utah State. David Pat, Western Carolina. Sentinels. Rob Roll, LSU. Chris Adams, Alabama. Derek Dunn, Mitchell, Texas. Mr. Robach, Wisconsin. Randy Thomas, Mississippi. John Jansen, Chief. Wonder if Donna Shayla knows the name of that school is the U. University of Miami, sit down and six, and this is Chris to the outside. He gets taken down by the neck by Roy Williams. It'll be third short. He's the Dallas. UCLA. Roy Glover, San Diego State University. Cornelius, North Carolina, Al Singleton, Temple University. Great names. Louisiana State University. Chapman, Texas A&M. That's where? Detroit University. Moon, Kansas State. Roy Williams, the University of Oklahoma. Kansas, San Diego State. Dead Henry, South Florida. Henry had a big game last week against San Diego. Picked up after he had the Cleveland Brown over the last few years. And Elman throws in the pass put by Gene Strack as they burn the third and two. Get it out of the Dallas 43-yard line. Terrence Newman with a coverage of play. It is a joke. Gibbs is a little confident in it. Probably Mark now also is Jane Brass. In fact, his name is Olga. One of those guys that, you know, presses the game. He knows one way, and it's go. Here you can see him. He motions out to the outside to run an inside cut to the back, and he runs out and cut right there. He in motion to the right. 18 game. The ball is at the 40 yard line. This kid is going to be motion. John H. back is a term coming back. The ball talking to Joe Gibbs. He kind of created that situation last night. He gives some credit to, to I think, John Coriel. Exactly. Define the H. back. Well, it's really the second tight end that does all the move. Usually isn't in the line of scrimmage. You have a, a tight end, then you have an H. back. Now you take Cooley as the H. back, and he can line up at tight end. He can line up in the slot, can line in the back, he can line up in the wing. But it's to balance your offense. Second and nine. Who now unpressured gets it away and is caught by the tight end Robert Will. It's the yard die of the first down and Ray Williams on the safe blitz leveled down as he got it away. You look over there, that's a red skin thing to bunt right. Look at them, they have everything over here. This is where receivers are. Here comes Roy Williams to that side because they're not getting a bunch release. Mark Brunel was looking to throw his way, so even though he's a candor, that becomes his front eye. Third down and one from the 34-yard line. And it's flipped back. Clinton Portis threw at the first down as he took two of the 30-yard line. I guarantee it wasn't a play. It was a fun play. I had no idea what the heck it was, but Mark Bruden did a good job with it. Of course, Clinton Porter did because he gets a first down. You see, he had to fold the hand off. Then that, I think he was probably to flip it out there, and it was too late, so he just threw it out. Watch him, he kind of pulls it, goes to the left, and I have to get that ball out of my hands and get Clint Portis in. And Leroy Glover is diving over the center. Now Liddell Beckham's in game in the back. We're now throwing to the end zone, and it is down. At last moment, Anthony Henry, the ball floated. Santana Moss had been pushing. He'd gotten behind Henry, but Henry is there to break it up. It will be through first and complete pass. Yeah, it, it looked like he was going to get Anthony Henry. He was him a pump, and right here Santana Moss has it. A couple steps. Brunel just goes one a little straight. Had gotten one out there a good Had put a little more on. Gotten out there a little more. That would have been a touchdown. Second and 10, 29 yard line. Brunel. Huge run with great effectiveness on his quicker run. And he's out of bounds. In fact, Brunel in the league passing yardage and in rushing yards for quarterbacks back in 96. And, and you all played uh, Brunel a lot like they play Michael Vick now. He always played to run to the left. Because usually a running game would be to right, and then he would play or play action to left. Third down, eight. It's got started at the Washington 31-yard line. Going out of the shotgun. Of Mason, Washington, didn't use it all last year. And made it one of the reasons. Brunel loves the shotgun. That win was able to blitz. They did not run a single play out of the shotgun last year at first play. This year is that. You see, it was not only a, a blitz, it was a stunt. Going to see that win come around in the outside. See, starts in the mid. Now watch him come in the outside. The back picks up inside guy, and no one up that win. Now Mark Nell can't be looking at stunt in front of him. He has to be looking uphill. 
yard sack that forces a punt instead of a long field goal. Andy Groom, career player out of Ohio State, took one. Tom Cooper was third in training camp, and he will deaden that one at about 12 yard line. They'll down at the 14. That's where Dallas will have for its second drive. 425 remaining in the opening period. That's nothing. Washing nothing. against Valencia and later Real takes on Celta de Vigo on Friday Real Madrid face up against Athletic Bilbao Spanish football only on ESPN next tonight we'll go to Denver the Broncos calling on yesterday against San Diego hosting the two of Kansas City each and Sunday night for Fort York Lions head west to take off the San Diego Chargers That's the action next week from the 14 yard line Dallas to get strong with 20 for the period Julius Schultz swings to outside breaks a tooth and then picks up nine yards. Lamar Marshall get him down in the back. Oh, let's get a report on Prelo as we get down to San Ryan. Well, Al, you mentioned Prelo for Greg Lee in Buffalo. This is his first year with Washington Redskins. It's already the game. The news is not good for him. He has a pulled right hand. Was suffered on the first Dallas series. After he pulled, you see he grabbed his leg almost as if he knew right away. They are icing it now, but the word is that he is done for the game, Al. So Prelo finished in the half to most of the action it's from safety to 41 it's second down short here and they give it to jones who moved to the outside he can take it to the inside to catch passes and you know you're going to make a guy a star after a half season but you're looking at a guy who you think is emerging star right there well and when you mean you really like him he's one of those bright-eyed guys you know always has a bounce in his walk and you know he's happy and, and he just looks like a guy that is very very anxious please bill parcells and tonight, if he can get 88 yards rushing, he'll go over a thousand for his first in game. Show you in a little while. That is the very elite in a luscious company. If he joins quickly, the swing pass here and a great open field tackle. Walker is coming up and saying, "Hey, kid, you know, your second year. I'm in my tenth. I've seen move before." You know, it's one of the things the Cowboys are trying to do more. Julius Jones is get him involved in the passing game, and uh, you know, because last year was just kind of wondering if we're going to throw the ball, they throw it to the guys, but they want him to be the running back pass receiver. Have you noticed that there hasn't been a full book in there, Cowboys? They don't want to. No, they don't want to. That's the reason they, they have the ends have been back there. Jane Whitman in the backfield. Ann Kittle has been back there. And of course, they just have one back. That trend that maybe can lead one over the next couple of years. Second down and call. Short carry for Jones. We're talking about Julius. And if he can gain 88, take a look at this. Those are the guys who have gained 1,000 yards in their first 10. Only four of them. Dickerson, Rogers, Edger and James, Otisson. That's good. Play. So it proves in a way that if you do that, not a flash in the hand. Each of those guys with great reason for his still going. You know, the other thing is probably the easiest position to be in and adapt to is running the ball in the NFL. Double slot right. He's gone here. Bledsoe third down and goes over the middle. And then caught the tie of the first down as Sean Springs made sure Jane Witten doesn't get the first down and Dallas is for the punt. Now that's one thing that impressed me with these washed red skin corners is a good tackler. And the play before we saw Paul Harris make a, a good open field tackle. And then on that one, Sean Springs make a good open field tackle. And that, they dug a cover corners. And I remember, you know, some said, yeah, if you're going to cover one of the first, they have to cover the run. And there's a lot of truth in that. The two corners do play the run very well. For everything. Matt McBride. That's good. He's going to pull it wide. He gets the corner one. 
and that's fielded into the 25 yard line by Thresh. He brings it back out to the 36 with 40 ticks remain in a really ticks first period. Cowboys and Reds scoreless serving. Every time that close enough, you're not good enough. Every time the last minute seems like an eternity. Every time the defender shifts to slow motion. Every time 15 yards seems an ocean. Every time a tie is completely out of the question. Every time technique overshadows power. Surpassed expertise. Seven days a week, 24 hours a day. And it is this dedication to our fans that gives us the right to call ourselves. This week on ESPN, on Thursday, Barcelona clashes against Valencia, and later, the Real takes on Celta de Vigo. On Friday, Real Madrid faces off against Athletic Bilbao. Spanish football, only on ESPN. Welcome back to Monday Night Football on ESPN from Dallas, Texas, the home of the Cowboys, playing host to the Washington Redskins in the 91st meeting all time in this rivalry. So the Cowboys have dominated it lately, winning 14 of the last 15 matchups. We're going to get back out to a scoreless first quarter in D. Redskins at the 36 scoreless first quarter. And we begin here at Pittsburgh. It's going absolutely nowhere, running into Jason Ferguson. Picked up to play with the Jets. Play for Parcells there. And Ferguson, the tackle, is right there to make the stop. Well, you know, we talked about how they're, they're, they're putting in deep different defense guys here's ferguson right here he comes in with two rookie defensive ends and and he is a bigger stronger guy than roy glover he is a guy that can really handle that run now here's another guy who's pretty good against everything that's 94 to wear drafted wear out of troy in the first round we have full start here against the number 47 by here i think still second down that's Chris Cooley, Bill Parcells talking about rolling in, rotating his defensive line, exactly what he's doing in San Diego last week. And it's really essential to do it on a night when the, the temperature is... Wait. It was up to 99 in Irving today, and right now it's down to the low 90s. Right, you saw number 99. That, that's Chris Canty. He is going to be a good one. And the other end is Marcus Spears, 96. Second and 16. Here's Brunel out of the shotgun. Swings it to the outside. It's intercepted by Newman. At the 40 line, and Newman will set Dallas up in great field position at the beginning of the second quarter because that's the play that ain't the first period. Terrence Newman's fifth in his five games against the Redskins. So no score and one. And Monday Night Football continues after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Can you be a poker player and not have a nickname? They call me the Quiet Lion. I'm a cousin for you, baby. It's awesome, man. Great grammar. I love the colorfulness, uh, the different characters it creates. Crazy Horse. The professor of poker. DC. There's like 27 Steves and 80 Pete's. It's easier to remember a nickname than it is to remember the guy's real name. It's Miami John instead of just your nudo. Geography has always been a popular source for finding a name. Lamb roll of Flynn. Texas Holly. Crazy Canuck. At the poker table, you may find yourself next to a master. You sit next to the man of mine. I move furniture, man, for a living. I sit next to you. My nickname is Mike Mouth. God shall give it, and God shall take away. My nickname is Wookie. <laughs> Junior by 24, 10,000. 
seconds of a second. Sam Hardy Jr. has won by four times this season. Game's greatest players play in one of the world's best ball leagues. The Italian Serie A. The beautiful game lives in Italy. Next up, Lecce takes on Fiorentina. Thursday on ESPN. Team. Terrence Newman picking off that pass that ended the first period as the teams change ends here. The ball is at the 31-yard line of the Redskins. Anthony Thomas has come into the game as the wing back. Julius Jones will get a breather here. And the ex Chicago Bear goes nowhere, loses a yard, yard and a half, tackled by Marcus Washington. Back to the pick we go. Yeah, I mean, the first thing, Mark Brunel has a bad read here because you're going to see Terrence Newman is up in a cover two as a corner. James Thrash is a slot, and he's going to run it out. I think Brunel thinks that Newman comes with the inside guy. You see, he starts, and then he has that short outside because Keith Davis, the safety, is over the top. So he could play aggressively on anything and everything underneath. Mark Brunel did not read that cover. You saw Patrick Ramsey, the man that Brunel supplanted on that. Back to pass goes Lesso, swings it out here to Thomas. And Thomas gets taken down at the 32-yard line. Walt Harris is there. Lesso was the number one overall pick in the 1993 draft by New England. Parcells was the coach there at that time. Came out of Washington State. And drew some very good years. Led New England to a Super Bowl against Green Bay back in 96. He has been unbelievably durable throughout his, has missed very few games. But the irony is, when he did get hurt in 2001, that opened the door in New England to Tom Brady. And you know the rest. And it opened the door for Bledsoe to leave. He spent three years in Buffalo. They let him go. And now he gets reunited with Parcells. And this is 13th year in the league here in Dallas. Out of the shotgun. Bledsoe throws. And that's caught for a first down by Keyshawn Johnson. Coming off a big game against Chargers last Sunday. You see what they did is they got in shotgun. Now, Bill Parcells knows. That's the first thing he told me. He said, if, if Bledsoe's going to have any success, we have to protect him. Okay, you put him in shotgun, and you have two personal protectors right back there. That, that gives him time that, that he can not only look, but he can step up. And if you let him to the field, and you let him have clean feet, he'll do this to you all night. 16-yard game. Ball is at the 15-yard line. Bledsoe has started 8 of 10 for 43 yards. The fake to Thomas. That buys time. Then Bledsoe has to throw underneath and go back to Thomas. Takes it to the 11-yard line, about five shy of the first. Warwick holds the linebacker, 57, makes the stop. You know, if there's been any any problem with Drew Bletzer over the years, it's that you know he's a real tough guy, and, and he'll he'll he's a pocket passer, and he'll hang in that pocket, and sometimes he holds the ball a little too long, and and I know the coaches were saying get rid of it, get the ball out of there, don't hold the ball, and but he still wants to make that completion and hold it as long as he can to get a completion. Last week, as you saw, they were perfect. Four touchdowns on four trips into the red zone. They're in the red zone right now, and they give the ball to Thomas again. He takes it to the 10. That's going to set up a third and four. Marcus Washington in on the stop. Yeah, I'm really impressed with the way the Cowboys are calling plays tonight. Sean Payton really has a great mixture because, you know, Greg Williams is one of these guys that wants to get in long yardage and then come after you. Sean Payton hasn't let him do that. You know, and then when he's going to pass, he's given him maximum protection, and he hasn't let him, you know, he hasn't let him get to Drew Bledsoe. And Allen so far, Dallas, 10 runs, 11 passes. They've already run 21 plays, and we're only 18 minutes into the game. This is the time they like to go to Keyshawn Johnson. Ooh, he was looking at too. And a whistle before the snap on third down and four as he looked that way. And I think Keyshawn Johnson was going to run, and, run an option. Offense, number 62. Five yard penalty, still third down. Marco Rivera, formerly with Green Bay, and uh, they picked him up in the offseason. Big acquisition for Parcells. You know, the closer you get to the goal line, the more effective Keyshawn Johnson is because he doesn't have to be wide open. And you see Bledsoe was looking out there. There was only one receiver out there to the left, and Keyshawn Johnson was running a type of an offer. Now they have a different pattern. This is one where they have four wide receivers, one tight end, empty backfield. And third down and nine from the 15-yard line. And Bledsoe throwing. 
too far for Keyshawn Johnson. But you know, it's funny, John, you, you look at the way Dallas has run things tonight, and you can tell it's a different type of play calling, and they do go back to Sean Payton giving them a different look from a Parcells team. Well, that's that's the reason that he's calling these plays, too, because he, he does have a different thing. And this what you try to do to Keyshawn Johnson. You just try and get him in the back of the end zone and get a jump ball. But, you know, you always scout the play call. You know, years ago, it used to be a scout the quarterback and his tendencies. And then it became whoever the play caller is, you now scout him. 33-yard attempt for Jose Cortez. On the job in camp, where they kind of got hurt. This is the man right now. He's the difference in the game. It's 3 nothing Cowboys. FBI agents Moss and Kevin Copeland have a new assignment. The girls in the photo are heiresses to the Wilson fortune. And if the kidnappers strike, we will be ready. But to carry it out, let's do this. They'll have to go where no black man has gone before. Brittany and Tiffany Wilson check. Sorry. They're new. It gets so real. <laughs> there is something different about the two of you. It's just not gonna work. Well, of course not. You're wearing the wrong underwear. Ah! He's got my gun and badge. Go! Jeez, ah! lady, all that for a bag? It's Prada. From the brothers who brought you scary movies. Yo, what's up, money? You got a problem? Nah, yo, hold my poodle. Comes a film that sheds new light on going undercover. Sean Wayans. Don't hurt yourself, sweetheart. Don't hurt yourself. Merlin Wayans. I don't see why I gotta go with bumpy white girl slayers. Cause if you don't, the blog cover. Sorry, tongue's kind of big. Hey, cheers. Premier Sunday, October 2, on Showtime. Everybody loves the Emmys. And to celebrate, don't miss our biographies on two of the Emmy-winning stars of the hit sitcom, Everybody Loves Raymond. There are my three Emmys. Doris Roberts. She was usually loved, I think, by the audience out there. And Ray Romano. Ray is kind of like the other child that you have to kind of guide and tell him what to do. Award winners, amazing stories. The stars of Everybody Loves Raymond, part of Emmy Greats Week, all this week on the Biography Channel. Ball appearances, five fewer than the Miami Dolphins. They have only one fewer victory, though, with a win tonight. The Cowboys could join the Dolphins with 39 Monday Night Football victories. That would be a tie for the most all time. Right now, they lead 3 nothing over the skins. Emmett Smith is here tonight, who I mentioned at the time. Troy Aikman and Michael Irvin as well. Their numbers, 8, 22, and 88, will be retired tonight. Their names will be put up in the ring of honor. The triplets. It's their night in Irvin. Liddell Vesco will kick off back. And the number two running back behind Clinton Portis takes it 28. Brunel and company go to work right there with 11-14. Remaining in the opening half in Irving, Texas. The Dallas Cowboys three. The Washington Redskins nothing. Hollywood has the Academy Awards. Now poker has the Royal Flush Awards. Better known as the Flushies. 2004 was the year that the highlight culture invaded poker. Raising the ante on post hand celebrations. Greg Ramers may have been the biggest. Matthias Anderson, the loudest. There was one other performance, however, that Flushies could not ignore. With entrances so grand. Reactions so spectacular. <laughs> And perhaps the best line ever spoken after getting busted. If there weren't luck involved, I guess I'd win every one. Phil Hellmuth turned in a transcendent performance in 2004, earning him the flushy for performance of year. End of interview.
on Pata Nidra. Then, the latest news in the world of sports on SportsCenter. Pata Interruption and SportsCenter, only on ESPN tonight. Al Michaels, John Madden, and Sam Ryan will be filling in over the next few weeks while Michelle Sequoia is on maternity leave. Back to Irving, Texas we come. Mark Brunel, the quarterback of the 28-yard line. Brunel starting last year in the season as number two and then ascending to number one. Here's Portis to the outside. Brunel and Bledsoe, the two Bs, you go back, and these two guys play college football in the state of Washington. Bledsoe at Washington State, Brunel at Washington. Bledsoe was the first pick in the draft. Brunel, the 118th in the fifth round by the Packers. Big break for Brunel, traded to Jacksonville. They met in the AFC Championship game in 96, won by the Pats. Bledsoe then to the Bills when Bray took over. Brunel leaving Jacksonville and coming to the Skins. And now here they are matched up again. And as we mentioned earlier, Patrick Ramsey started last year. He was the starter. He got hurt. They brought Brunel into the game. Ramsey was cleared to play. But Joe Gibbs said, you know what? I'm making my quarterback switch right now in the middle of the first game of the season. No game here. And it will be third down and three. <laughs> you know. John, there are short leashes, but I'm inclined to think that Joe must have spent a lot of the offseason thinking after he named Ramsey the starter way back last winter, did I do the right thing? And I always say when you when you think you have two, that means you don't have any because you don't know who your starter is. And you know, as he said, this isn't finished yet. I mean, he wants one of these guys to, to step up and, and play like an NFL quarterback and take the reins in this thing. Third down and three out of the shotgun. Brunel stepping up, fires, tip, and complete, free and out. David Patton, the intended receiver, is covered there by Anthony Henry, and Brunel has started the game two out of five for 26 yards. You know, you know what was an interesting thing on those last two plays? The, the Dallas Cowboys went into a four-man line. Here coverage out here, but we're talking about how they're a three-man line. And remember when New England did that? They just into that four-man line to stop the run? Well, that's what they did on second down. Then they stayed with it on third, and that's why they stopped that second down run. That's it. And Parcells. Andy Groom to punt. 26 yard line. This is Patrick Creighton, Dallas's number three wide receiver. Running back punch takes it to the 35 yard line with nine and a half to go in the opening half. In Texas, where it's very hot and the Cowboys are up three zip. The UEFA Champions League. And Liverpool are the champions of Europe. Spanish football. Absolutely stupid shot for Ronaldinho. Italian football. And there it is. Honda Shevchenko. World Cup qualifiers. What an absolutely stop strike. Football around the world on ESPN. ESPN Sport Legends presents Gary Player. In 1959, South African Gary Player won his first major, the British Open. Two years later, at Augusta, Player defeated Arnold Palmer to win the Masters. I'm playing at Augusta, and there are 100,000 people there, and there are two people pulling for me, my wife and my dog. After winning the 1962 PGA Championship, Player stood just one major away from history. Jack Nicklaus was very instrumental in me winning the Grand Slam because he said to me that week, he said, look, the only major you haven't won is the U.S. Open. Why don't you travel with me? Don't play the tournament this week before the U.S. Open. Let's go and practice together, which I did. In the 1975 U.S. Open, Gary Player defeated Kelgill in an 18-hole playoff, joining Gene Sarazen and Ben Hogan as the only player to accomplish a career Grand Slam of the four professional majors. Giants and Saints game. They have moved to the fourth quarter with New York leading by 14 points. Eli Manning having a strong game. Five yard line and Drew Bledsoe has completed nine passes to this point in the game to seven different receivers. Julius Schoen's after getting a break on the last series when Anthony Thomas came in as the running back. 
is back in the game. So Jones sets up. Take to him. Let's run. Run. When you get that much room, you're compelled to run. He takes it to the 40. Let's go to Sam Ryan. Al, you've been talking about Drew Bledsoe and Mark Rennell, both part of that 93 draft class. Well, their history is a little interesting. Drew was telling me Mark was the host on his recruiting trip to the University of Washington. When I asked Mark about it, he told me, hey, I didn't want to show Drew a good time. I didn't want to see some young star coming in here and taking my job. He said he tried to convince him to stay in his hotel room. Well, Alan John, it worked because Drew went to Washington State, as we know. And the two of them, of course, uh, Washington, Washington State, great rivals, meeting in college. The ball is at the 40-yard line on second down and five. They give it to Julius Jones, and Jones is a little short of the first down. They stop him uh, shy of the marker as Joe Salavea makes the tackle. It'll be third down and a short one. That's bad coaching when you when you have a quarterback coming in to visit and you let the other quarterback be the host. You never do that. You let some old lineman up and do it. <laughs> You know, who, you know who's playing well on this Cowboy team is, is Rob Petit. You know, he's, a, he's a rookie right tackle, and I think that the, the pass protection and the run blocking these Cowboys in the first half has been excellent. He's a rookie out of Pittsburgh. That was a big story in training camp. I thought Jacob Rogers would be the guy, and he ends up on injured reserve. And Petit, the rookie from Pitt, takes over, and that's a great tackle in the backfield by Lamar Marshall. He's a pretty underrated linebacker. He's in his fourth year out of Michigan State. Antonio Pierce had uh, been the guy in the middle for Greg Williams last year, and he winds up with the Giants, and Marshall comes off a good game last week against Chicago. Yeah, you're going to see Marshall right here, and sometimes you just go laterally, but whenever you see a hole, you just run in that hole. Now watch Marshall. He comes here, and instead of staying laterally, he finds that hole, and he just runs right into it, and that's how you throw it back for a loss. So on third and one, they can't convert. Fourth down, James Thrash goes back to receive the punt. Off the foot of Matt McGuire, who's really booming. This one is an angled kick, and it's going to be a very good kick. You know, it takes a backward hop. But down by Reeves at the 10-yard line. And with 7-12 to go in the half, and the Cowboys up 3-0. The Redskins begin their next drive. Every time that close enough is not good enough. Every time the last minute seems like an eternity. Every time the defender shifts to slow motion. Every time 15 yards seems like an ocean. Every time time is completely out of the question. Every time technique overshadows power. They're there. With deeper coverage, wider coverage. With strong opinions. With unparalleled access. With unsurpassed expertise. Seven days a week. 24 hours a day. And it is this dedication to our fans that gives us the right to call ourselves the leader. Best of Friday Night Fights on ESPN. In 2000, the USBA and NAVA featherweight titles were on the line when an undefeated Angel Vasquez defended his belts against Southpaw Max Gomez. Friday, ESPN. One of the NFL's greatest rivalries continues. It's a rivalry with the temperature field close to 100 degrees. It's a rivalry dominated by the Cowboys over the last seven and a half years. The Cowboys have won 14 of the last 15 meetings between these two teams. 7 12 begin the first half. And we start with Cordis picking up a couple after the 12 yard line. Look at number 76 there, Al. John Jansen. Now, that's something I don't know that I've ever heard of a guy with two broken thumbs. So he's playing with a cast on each hand, and they made a 
a special cast where just his thumbs in the cast, so he has each four fingers free so he can still hold. You see that the, the, the thumb is in the cast, but he can still grab with those four fingers. You've heard about a guy who's all thumbs. Here's a guy who's no thumbs. Brunel to the outside. That's caught. Little for the first down. Royal gets bounced out of bounds. Two thumbs down, two thumbs up. John and I will we'll be here all week. We're just going to play in the lounge, not the, not the main room. <laughs> but, but, you know, it really is tough. I mean, it's tough enough, you know, to pass protect and to pick up guys and, you know, and to get out there and practice. And then you break the thumb. And, and I mean, it hurts, but it's a distraction. And break another thumb, and then you double your distraction, but you still have to block your guy, pick up blitzes, do all these things. They're rotating their defensive linemen against it, but you have to play it. And he's back after a torn Achilles he suffered in the first preseason game last year. And Brunel converts on third down, hitting James Thrash. Short pass there, but enough for a first down. First and ten, here's Sam again. Well, you're talking about those casts that John Jansen is wearing on both of those thumbs. These are carbon fiber casts. They're really lightweight. He told me they took molds of his hands last week on Tuesday, the position that he wanted his hands during the games. His wrists and thumbs are supported, yet he does have movement of those other four fingers in each hand. The cast, he didn't get them till Friday. The one thing he told me is difficult to do outside football, tying his shoes. Think about them. He said he's all fingers. Man, are those bizarre looking from the 22-yard line. Short pass over the middle. It's caught by Clinton Portis. It's a gain of about 5 27. Joe Gibbs comes back to coaching. John and I, of course, we talked about this a lot last year. 64 years old. Coached 12 years. Retired for 11, though he stayed very active, running a, a tremendous NASCAR operation. And then he comes back last year. And, of course, the town was just electric when it was announced that Joe Gibbs was coming back. I asked him last night, how was that first year? And he said, well, it was real good six times. <laughs> Not very good the other ten. Yeah, you know, and that's what it is. You know, when, when you've been coaching as long as Joe Gibbs has, and Bill Parcells, and, you know, Joe Gibbs is in the Hall of Fame, and, and you know, you win so much that you really expect win. So when you win, that's what you're supposed to do, and, and you don't really get the high of winning. But the loss of losing, because you don't expect to lose, and then lose, I mean, that just eats your guts up. And that's what Parcell said. He said winning's not the same, but when we were talking to Bill a couple of weeks ago in Seattle, he said losing's worse than ever. Yeah, and, and winning winning is kind of lessened, I think. I mean, I, I don't think the wins are as big. So now a little high. Gibbs, by the way, told us last night that's going to be a grandfather again. That will be seven grandchildren for Joe. So we asked him, so what do they call you? They call you grandpa, they call you gramps, they call you pop pop. You know what they call them? Coach. I think when you're a Hall of Fame coach, that's the first Hall words Lane, out Hall of Fame. a baby's mouth. Number 66, <laughs> 10 yard penalty, repeat first down. Derek Dockery. I don't know how that can be the first thing that they, I mean, it, it's always like pop or, grand, or something that has to do with that. Coach. Joe Gibbs. That's what they call him. Three Super Bowl titles. And these two rookie defensive ends again in for the Cowboys. That's, Bill Parcells has 22 players active on defense tonight because he wants to roll them. First and 20 after the penalty. For inside and paying the price, Santana Moss. They got him from the Jets. Lavernius Coles have been with Washington. And they sent Coles back to the Jets and Moss. And they think Moss can make some big plays, but not here. The big play was made by Dat Win. And that was a wide receiver screen is what it was. You see Moss out here. See, he starts up, then he comes back. Then you, then, then you get your H back and your tackle out there to block for him. But Dat Win blew the whole thing up before Green was able to develop. So Moss's first pass of the night is a one-yard loss, second and 21. Very fast first pass, 345 to go. With the is in as the running back. They send him out into the pattern. And we know will go to him on the sideline. And he gets taken out by Anthony Henry up at the 28-yard line. And that will set up a third down and 15. You know, one of the one of the new young players for this Cowboys that is really going to be a good one is Marcus Ware, number 94 there. Because he can use his hands and feet at the same time. And you know, you know, not have to stop to use his hands. But on that one there, Chris Samuels did a good job of blocking him. But 
DeMarcus Ware, and he's going to be the Lawrence Taylor type of guy in Bill Parcells' defense. What a great fit he figures to be. Played his college football at Troy in Alabama. There he is. He gets picked up by Betts. But Brunel is going to get sacked anyway from the other side because you've got Greg Ellis coming in the first guy to hit him. And then Marcus Spears, who was the other first-round draft choice, in addition to where the second guy to hit him. You know, and I think that's that's the reason that Bill Parcells is so happy. You know, we talked about, you know, you know it's, it's his defense, it's his guys. He has young guys, and we... And we see DeMarcus Ware come from the outside, and right inside him is Marcus Spears. These guys are going to just improve and get better and better and better and be good for a long time. So it's fourth and 26 as Groom comes into punt. And that's out of bounds, and they'll spot it at the 37-yard line. And the Redskins now in almost six full quarters this season have yet to score a touchdown. Three field goals good enough last week. Tonight they're down 3-0 with 242 to the half. Open your eyes to a new world of sports. The fastest open-wheel cars in the world compete on ESPN. Eight months and 17 races will decide who the Indy Racing League champion will be. Follow international stars, Australian rookie Ryan Briscoe, Scott Dixon, Dan Weldon, and American rookie sensation Danica Patrick. A full season of speed, Indy Racing League on ESPN. My most fantastic moment in, in sport was when I was watching the Pipe Masters and I saw Tom Carroll. My little brother is um, uh, a really well-known professional surfer. The day before the final for the Pipeline Masters, we received the news that our sister had been killed in a car accident. It just seemed to me that Tom was really rattled and that he wasn't going to be able to kind of summon up the uh, mental strength to uh, overcome. And I saw Tom Carroll paddle into a most unbelievable wave and then right at the last second when the wave was about to pinch off, it just spat a little bit of spray out the way Pipeline does. And with that spray out, that Tom, right at the end, he got a perfect count on that wave. The whole uh, beach stood to their feet, and it was amazing that he would um, uh, put his down so hard in such a critical situation. Uh, that that took my breath away and gave me chicken skin. And went on the whole contest that day. For your next edition of Sports Center, we'll read all the top stories from around the world of sports and have all the highlights and scores as well here on the Worldwide Leader Sports. Or go ahead and log on to ESPN.com 24-7 to keep in touch with all the big stories of the sporting world. For now, back to Dallas where the Skins and Cowboys battle in the second quarter. Time and I'm talking and it's all good. In the 37-yard line, 242 to the half. The Cowboys begin. Remember when that used to be illegal when the quarterback put his hands underneath? He couldn't bring them out. Right. Like so, throws. And Jones makes the catch, but smelling that one out perfectly is Marcus Washington, the former Colt. Six here now out of Auburn. He had a big year last year for the Redskins. In fact, he was the only Redskin player to play in the Pro Bowl. No huddle here. First time tonight that Dallas has attempted this. And the two-minute run plus two timeouts. Second down and six. And that stretch play. Jones, as he turns it back upfield, gets taken down there by Cornelius Griffin, and that's going to take us to the two-minute warning. And the Cowboys will come up with a third down. And three at their own 40 for it. Three nothing Dallas. Two minutes to the half. There's a fire catching around the world. And if cricket is your game, this is your show. ESPN presents ICC Cricket World. The only show of its kind from the game's highest authority. The International Cricket Council. 
exclusive interviews, in-depth features, full access to every aspect of the world of cricket. ICC Cricket World on ESPN. Spanish football action continues this week live on ESPN. On Thursday, Ronaldinho, Eto, and Barcelona's Pablo attack clash against Valencia. Then the Raquelme and Forlan's yellow submarine against the always dangerous Celta. And on Friday, the Real Madrid Galacticos face off against Athletic Bilbao. On Thursday, Barcelona, Valencia. Later, Villarreal, Celta de Vigo. And on Friday, Real Madrid against Athletic Bilbao. Spanish football, only on ESPN. My most fantastic sports memory was Kathy Freeman winning the 400 at the Sydney Olympics. I think I even cried. Kathy Freeman in the 400 metres. Just the fact she had uh, so much pre running, she was able to uh, pull it off in the end, so she did well with the goal. That put a little tear in my eye. <laughs> yeah, and that's what sport does for me. It gives a, brings a lot of emotion. You know, emotionally charges me so hard because I know what it takes to actually bring the best out of yourself. As we work our way to the end of the first half, a reminder to keep it here for the NFL Halftime Report. We will kick it off, as always, with SportsCenter in-game. Some news from around the NFL, injury-related also. Some English Premier League news, and the Barcelona coach no longer in business. Two minutes to go. Two timeouts for Dallas. Third down and three. Third down and three. And they come up with Terry Glenn set in the backfield. Stack two receivers to the left. And Bledsoe's going to swing it out to Glenn. And then Glenn falls down and loses the ball. And it's a live ball. No. Incomplete. Walt Harris was there. And Glenn never had control. Coming in, headlines and ruling incomplete. Yeah, that was a screen pass they were trying to throw to him. And I think when you put Terry Glenn in the backfield, you better watch him. Because you know he's not going to run it. And you know that he's not going to be back there as a blocker. But it was a screen pass. And you see Marco Rivera is out there to lead him. Ooh. Well, I'll tell you something, John. I think he had possession of this. And in the last two minutes... Oh, he did have possession. Yeah, oh, he did. But then did the ball come out after his knee went down? Big, big break right there because Dallas is able to punt instead of losing the football. And the Friars kick just does go into the end zone. Washington will have it at the 20-yard line. So the Redskins, who will have an off week next week. Meanwhile, the Cowboys are going to go west. They're going to play back-to-back -back games in the Bay Area at San Francisco and then at Oakland the following week. Mark Brunel, Clinton Portis right there. Clinton Portis started his career with Denver and the report from the replay booth. And again, they have to initiate it in the final two minutes of each half. You can't be challenged by the coaches. And they said upstairs, at least the report we get, is that he did not have possession. I thought it was very close. Isn't this a, a, fast, a fast first half? About as quick as it can be. There have only been four total penalties. Right, and six incomplete passes. Right. And 24 runs. I mean, you know, both of these teams feel that they have to run the ball or establish the run. Brunel out of the shotgun. And that pass is caught on the outside, and it's caught there by Clinton Portis, and he gets tackled. And, of course, we mentioned before that Joe Gibbs did not employ the shotgun one time. Last year, when we were talking to Mark Brunel last night, he said, I love it. And I asked Joe Gibbs what made him change, and he said, because on offense, we stunk last year. <laughs> That'll do it. And he scored 15 points a game, second worst in the league to Chicago. And that's Marcus Spears making the tackle here, a little short of the first down. It's third and one. They haven't smelled real good on offense this year. They have all three timeouts. They have only 62 total yards in the half. Third and inches, and that'll convert. Brunel himself will take it up to the 32-yard line, and we're under a minute, and they will take their first time out with 54 ticks, and Brunel will go over to the sideline and discuss things with Joe Gibbs. Monday Night Football is being brought to you by Southwest Airlines, proud sponsor of the NFL and official airline of Super Bowl 40. By Bud Light, smooth and refreshing Bud Light, great taste for your great times. And by Nike Football. Light providing the Phoenix. 
Texas Stadium, home of the Cowboys, since uh, very early in their history. They began play in the Cotton Bowl. Jerry Jones, the owner of the team, has owned the team since 89. Very active, of course, in every phase of the football operation. They're going to break ground on their new stadium out in Arlington, near where the Texas Rangers play baseball, and hope to be in that new park, which will have a retractable roof for the 2009 Jerry campaign. Jones. Jerry Jones is uh, very active in anything that goes on in the NFL, and, and for the good. I mean, he is good for the league. And you're wondering what he's down on the field at the end of the first half. Remember, they had the halftime ceremony with Aikman and Urban and Emmett Smith, and you've got a whistle here for a full start before the snap. And you wonder when they're going Both to third throw offense, one. Number 60. Five-yard penalty, still first down. A deep one to Santana Moss. I mean, that's that's the reason they got Santana Moss, and Joe Gibbs was talking about that. You know, that we didn't get any big plays. We need a big play guy, and I think, well, to get a big play out of a big play guy, you have to try it, and I think they threw him a screen pass. Or I mean, so, somewhere, I think, I think they have to take up a shot to Santana Moss. He's at the bottom of the screen, covered by Aaron Glenn. Instead, they stick to the ground on first and 15. Portis taking it up to the 32-yard line. You know, both of these teams are, are almost scared to death of long yardage, you know, because they know that's when they're going to get, you know, the heavy pass rush and the blitzes and the nickel defense and those kinds of things. So they're trying to stay in manageable down distance. Second and 11, Brunel, who last year started as the starter, going deep, and then is knocked away, intended for David Patton, the ex-Patriot, by Anthony Henry. Anthony Henry, the ex con you've got a holding call. Meanwhile, back in the backfield the holding call against the washington redskins and yeah, we talked about additions to this cowboy team and you know and the holding young guys offense and number 61 10 yard penalty still second down the raw back the center i was saying the young guys the the defensive line the linebackers but i'll tell you this anthony henry is a real positive addition because they were a little weak at that corner last year and i think that that caused a lot of other weaknesses now because of him, I think they can get their safeties closer to the line of scrimmage. I mean, he made plays like this against the charge all day. Second and 21. 24 seconds and two timeouts. And they're going to be content to go down by three and into the locker room as they give it to Liddell Betts, who takes it up to the 27-yard line. You know, you don't know if we're seeing here in this first half of seeing great defense or just conservative offense. A little of both, maybe. Yeah, I think, I, I, I mean, the, the tackling has been excellent. I Dallas. think the play calling been a little conservative, especially on the Redskins side. Dallas took that time out. They have a chance to get the ball back. Washington was content to run out the clock and Parcell says wait a second we might be able to get it back that defensive just started early as Brunel got sacked the first time he operated out of the shotgun that's the only scoring of the first half not on that that was the missed field goal the 41 yarder by Cortez but then he came back to make a 33 yarder meanwhile Washington we talked about John the switch at quarterback last year Brunel started then midway through the season they went to Ramsey then they started this year with Ramsey and our good pal in the great with Tony Kornheiser had a great column last week, the last line of which was talking about the quarterback switch. He said, welcome to last year. <laughs> and someone else said, if Brunel is the answer, what's the question? The question. And Beck just fumbles the ball. And Dallas has it. And that's Keith Davis with nine seconds on the clock at the 35-yard line. So they're not quite, but almost in field goal range right now as the Dallas Cowboys come back with a chance to add to that three-point lead. You know, that's why you need a safety like Roy Williams who's going to give you big plays like this. I mean, when he hits you, everything is going to be flying, including the ball. I mean, he is he is something special. I mean, not only does he, he feel it and read it, but then he gets up there and does something about it. So now Dallas has to try to get a little closer and stop the clock. They do have a timeout. Right now you'll be looking at about a 53-yard field goal, pretty much out of Cortez's range. So they need a few yards and a clock stoppage. I think like a 10-yard play would be a perfect thing here, just like this. That's about what they're looking for, but it's incomplete intended for Keyshawn Johnson, and now you're down to six seconds. And now you need a fast 10. I mean, a real fast 10. Well, you could do the same thing because that one took, what, three seconds? It was nine, 
and now it's six. So if you did the same type of rhythm and timing, you would still have three seconds left. That's what Bill Parcells is thinking. Second down and ten at the 36-yard line. Three nothing Dallas. 99-yard total offense. And the Redskins are playing a very soft defense here. They they're giving them the ten yards. Yeah, they rush four. And that pass is caught, and then it is lost by Patrick Creighton, but he stayed in bounds. He couldn't get out of bounds, and time will expire. I think he just tried to dump the ball off out of bounds, but they couldn't stop the clock. So the telethon continues. It's 3-0 at the half, and the officials are still conferring here for a second as to whether the clock should have run out well remember a coach can call a timeout and i wonder if bill parcells called a timeout over on the sideline well the ball came loose creighton made the catch you saw the official keep winding the clock which means he didn't get out of bounds the half is over the receiver was tackled and forward progress inbounds line judge wound the clock for the forward progress the half is over yeah creighton's just trying to get rid of the ball and have it bounce out of bounds instead it stays in the field of play the clock expires and it's three nothing as we say at the end of the first half dallas on top hurricane relief telethon continues giant saints have highlights coming up on the toyota halftime show after this from our abc stations October on the Biography Channel. I did a bad thing. From Bill Clinton to James Hewitt. We would like to buy you a drink for this one. Nick Nolte to Mick Jagger. I don't think enjoying life is an exclusive prerogative of young people. They've been very naughty boys. Shut up. Be beautiful. Find out the not-so-beautiful truth about making it in the modelling world in the Australian premiere, Models. Fall in love again and again and again. He had to think quite a few of his leading ladies. They're addicted to love. Be inspired in an Australian exclusive production, The Entrepreneurs. There wasn't really much on offer that was for a sophisticated woman. An idea can take you straight to the top. Go back to the 50s and celebrate the iconic TV show Happy Days with Mrs. E, Richie Oh, hey, guys. And everyone's favourite, The Fonz. That's October on The Biography Channel. All about people all the time. From the dark heart of Australia, the shocking crimes that shook our nation. In one place, groundbreaking forensics, dramatic reconstructions, exclusive interviews. I was so involved in it, and I am a national. Join me for a feature-length world premiere investigation. The Graham Thorne and Daniel Morecambe cases. Kid for Ransom, Tears for Daniel. September 28 on Time and Investigation Network. Soccer each week from the U.S. Skill, tactic, and precision in the most prestigious World Club events. Complete coverage of the UEFA Champions League. And if this isn't enough, the World Cup qualifiers crown this exciting tour around the globe. Open your eyes to the beautiful game. Football around the world on ESPN. This is Sports Center in game. In NFL news, the day after shock, quarterback Michael Vick tweaked his hamstring in a 21-18 loss to the Seattle Seahawks. And then Falcons coach Jim Moore said his gut feeling is that Vick will be okay to play on Sunday. Vick's hamstring began hurting in the fourth quarter yesterday after a 30-yard run. Backup Matt Schaub came on to finish off a touchdown drive that brought the Falcons to within a field goal. Vick returned, but was a same. In other NFL news, Jets running back Curtis Martin has a strained right knee and the status is certain for Sunday's game against Jacksonville. Coach Herman Edwards said Monday that Martin was undergoing tests and would wait for results before determining whether his back can play. We don't know where he's at yet. Edwards said he's been against always answered the bell. In soccer, New England's Premier League, Arsenal versus Everton. We go to the 11th minute, Saul Campbell. Look at this play, middle of the penalty area. It's the header. Now we're going to jump up to the 30th minute. Still 1-0. Salt Campbell here. You would figure they'd want to put a body on him, but he's creeping in here off the free kick. This one's swinging in from the left, and he out-jumps everybody again for his second header goal. 
of the match. Very impressive. Let's see it again. Elevating over everyone, directing it into the goal for the 2 nothing win for Arsenal. Other soccer news, Barcelona's Dutch coach Frank Reichardt has in extended his contract by two years till 2009. The reigning Spanish champions announced Reichardt has been coached at the club since June of 2003 and his previous contract had been due to run in 2007. He was Dutch national coach from July 98 through June of 2000 and coached Sparta Rotterdam in 2001 and 2002. Last season, Barcelona won their first league title in six years. In August, they beat Real Betis for the Spanish Super Cup. Also, Didi Deschamps steps down from Monaco after a poor run of form that has left the 15th in League One and out of the Champions League. Quote, ending my collaboration with the club appears to me to be the best decision given the current situation. Said Deschamps, who was cheered by Monaco fans in an embarrassing 2-0 home defeat by Stad Ren on Sunday. listings for your next edition of Sports Center. Revolution, but it's nothing new. Sunglasses have been a long-standing part of poker. There are the wraparound glasses, the glasses on glasses glasses, and of course upside down glasses. They see it on TV and monkey see monkey do. But the big debate is, does it make a difference? Yes, it does. It's probably not true. Yeah, absolutely. No comment. Kind of depends. People who think they're from you with sunglasses really aren't. I don't think that's really that big a deal. What I like about the sunglasses is that I don't, really don't have to worry too much about what's happening with my eyes. A lot of the neophytes that come in, they're wearing dark wraparound things, and to me, that says fear. He's a scaredy cat. When you shift your eyes left or right, it signals strength or weakness. And now you can't tell where I'm looking. You have to admit, people just look cool in sunglasses. I love it. Las Vegas is the set for another season of poker. All your favorite card players have returned. The poker, Lady Luck, Phenom, and Brat. Ladies and gentlemen, we present the 2005 World Series Poker. Greatest players play in one of the world's best football leagues, the Italian Serie A. The beautiful game lit in Italy. Next up, Lecce takes on Fiorina, Thursday on ESPN. No. Touchdowns yet in the first two quarters of play. Monday Night Football here on ESPN. It is the Cowboys with the 3 0 lead at home over the Redskins. Take a look back to the first half highlights. Hey, Emmett Smith here. Joe, he's going to get inducted into the Ring of Honor. Mark Brunel in the early going. Throws this the guy in the wrong jersey. Ernst Newman, fifth interception in five career games against the Redskins. Cowboys take over on their own 32. On the ensuing drive, Ruth Bledsoe looking for one of his favorite targets. It's Keyshawn Johnson for the first down. Leads to... Jose Cortez field goal from 33 yards out. He missed one from 41 yards in the first quarter, but this time Cortez drills it through. Not a lot of offense in this game, but there has been some defense. Watch what Ryan Fowler does to Santana Mossy. They try to hit up the screen, but how's that for sliding in there and putting on the lick? Big hit by the Dallas backer. And then DeMarcus... Marcus Spears with a great penetration there. Three guys breaking down the offensive line and sacking Mark Brunel's been a tough day for him. Look at this, 11 first downs combined. Not a whole lot of offense in this game. 52 rush yards to 47. Redskins with a slight advantage there, but they only 33 net passing yards. Skins have also turned it over twice, so that has not helped things, but only 85 total yards. 
Yeah. And also going on tonight, the Giants and the Saints. That is Brandon Jacob, who took it across for the first score of the game, and it was 7 0. Giants are then middle screen. Tiki Barber takes the short pass from Eli Manning, makes it 14 0. And then Aaron Brooks. 21-yard strike for Joe Horn. New Orleans on the board. And New Orleans looking for more. The delay give to Tiki Barber. Runs it in for his second touchdown of the game. Made it 21 to 7. Giants. Right now, they are in the fourth quarter with less than 10 minutes to play. The Giants holding on to a 24 to 10 lead. Eli Manning, a solid game so far with a touchdown pass and 150 yards through the air. Aaron Brooks, well, he's thrown for a whole lot more yards, but you will notice those two interceptions. And then, of course, a big number is a negative for the Saints. That game was being played at Giant Stadium as a home game for the Saints, who have been displaced by a Hurricane Katrina. The NFL Halftime Board continues in a moment. Open your eyes to the world of sports with ESPN. Americans are as passionate about their sports as Australians, and it comes through loud and clear with our coverage of the top leagues and teams from North America. The pennant races in Major League Baseball are red hot, and you have the best seat in the house with ESPN's expanded coverage of baseball. Are you ready for some football? The NFL on ESPN comes at you each and every week of the season with live coverage of the rough and rugged world of American football. Number one draft pick, Andrew Bogut, makes his profane debut when the new NBA season begins in November. And the women players show their drive to compete WNBA action. The top golfers of the PGA hit the links while the legends battle in the Champions Tour. Great action year-round on ESPN. How about that? You feel that? Mm-mm. No. I like this. What do you think? You feel that? No. That's oh, so cool. Wild. Spanish football this week on ESP. On Thursday, Barcelona clashes against Valencia. And later, Little Real takes on Celta de Vigo. On Friday, Real Madrid faces off against Athletic Duma. Spanish football, only on ESPN. Welcome back to ESPN's Monday Night Football. The Dallas Cowboys hosting the Washington Redskins. No touchdowns in this game. Cowboys holding the slim 3 to nothing lead. Well, special night at Texas Stadium in Irving, Texas, as the Cowboys ring of honor. Has three new inductees, Emmett Smith, great running back, along with Troy Aikman and his favorite target, Michael Irvin. These guys played together and won three Super Bowls together. They did it in a four-year span. Super Bowls 27, 28, and 30. Emmett Smith, of course, number 22, is number one on the all-time career rushing list with 18,355 yards and 164 rushing touchdowns. That also an all-time record. Troy Aikman for his career threw for 32,942 yards, 165 touchdowns. And this trio that played together for so long, you could argue, was the most prolific trio to play together, both statistically and in terms of Super Bowl victories together. Their numbers were outstanding, but most importantly, they were NFL champions three times in their tenure. You have done. So to all the fans and all the Dallas Cowboy fans across the world, thank you, we love you. Bye-bye. At triplet. this time, we'd like to direct your attention to the wall at the 50-yard line across the field from the Dallas Cowboys bench where Michael Irvin, Troy Aikman, and Emmitt Smith 
will see their names take a permanent place with the other members of the Dallas Cowboys Ring of Honor. together onto the ring of honor here. There are some of the numbers through their careers. Aikman coming out of UCLA in 89 when Jimmy Johnson took over, passing for more than 32,000 yards and his career cut short by another in a series of concussions. Emmett, of course, played here through 2002 and then with Arizona through last season, the all-time leading rusher in the National Football League. And Michael had his career and by injury in Philadelphia with almost 12,000 receiving yards. And, you know, John, you think about all of the, the, the old Cowboys from the Landry years, and then you've got these Cowboys, and, and very neat that they're all three go into the Ring of Honor together. Yeah, and they were, and they were so special because they really played as a team. I mean, they were the triplets, and they were the leader of the team. But you, know, you think of Michael Irvin, you know, being a great receiver, but he was a great team guy. I mean, he was kind of the heart and soul that, that got everyone going. And, and Troy Aikman was so accurate. I don't know that there's ever been a guy more accurate than, than Troy Aikman. And, and you talk about a tough run back. I don't know that there's ever been a tougher running back. Well, maybe maybe Walter Payton, but uh, Emmett Smith was one of the toughest running backs of all time. Sure, remember that that performance in uh, New York with a separated shoulder and did, I was there. nothing could could stop him. I was there. There was only one time that I've been a broadcaster in my life that I ever went into a locker room after a game to congratulate a player, and and it, and it was Emmett Smith on that day. I mean, and he was. He was out and they were putting ice over his body and he had IVs in both arms and you know and he doesn't remember anything but you know I, I said this this is one of the greatest performances that I've ever seen in my life. Oh yeah, no no question about it. He turned in any number of them. He was tremendous on on Monday night. He almost said, well he rose to the occasion. It didn't matter what day of the week it was, but like like Jerry Rice, he saved some of his games for Monday, and the guys are going to come up here and visit with us in the third period. And that'll be nice, but you know what's exciting? Just look at this crowd. I don't think that a person left their seat during this halftime. Right. I don't remember, I don't think that I've ever seen that before in my life. I mean, it, I was sitting here watching this thing, and I was looking at the crowd, and I thought, this crowd may be bigger at halftime than it was sometimes during the first half. Everybody's happy about that, except the concessionaire. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Everybody stayed. Let's check in now with Sam Ryan. Sam? Hello, I spoke to both coaches at the half, starting with Joe Gibbs. I asked him about his defense being on the field almost 15 minutes in the first half. In this heat, he said the reason for that, turnovers. We turned the ball over twice. For his offense, struggling to move the ball in the first half, he said we have to do a better job with the ball. As for Bill Parcells, he said, hey, we are struggling just like they are, despite having the edge into the possession and decent field position. He said we've slowed down a bit. We got to get a running game going. Al? Yeah, that's a good point in the sense that uh, you think of Julius Jones as their stud out of the backfield. He's carried 11 times for 42 yards. On the other side, you've got Clinton Portis, nine carries for 31 yards. You only had 104 yards of total offense for Dallas and 85 yards, John, for Washington. Right, and I think, you know, part of it is, is real good defense by both teams. And another part of it has to be this heat. I mean, it, it you know, you know, it's tough. It's tough to play. It's tough to play full speed. It's tough to do all those big things that you want to do. I mean, I think maybe the first team that makes a big play is going to win this thing. And maybe the first team that tries to make a big play may get the big play in this thing. Has that feel. It was 99 degrees this afternoon in Irving, Texas. And right now, well, it's cooled off to, I don't know, at 91. <laughs> yeah, but down in the field, yeah. look at it, it's 100 degrees down in the field, yep. any way you look at it. And like, as a lineman, you know, they say, you know, good weather for this. This, this is a lineman's help. Cortez kicks off, it's fielded by Liddell Betts at the goal line. 
What a smack he takes. Up at the 13-yard line from Brett Pierce. He caught the first pass of the night for Dallas in the first quarter. Numbers, rushing yards, about even. Passing yards, Cowboys with 57, but that's 24 more than the Redskins. Talked about total yardage and the turnovers. That second turnover did not hurt the Redskins because it came at the end of the first half and Dallas couldn't capitalize it. First one led to the field goal. 3-0 from the 18. Mark Brunel, who is 9 out of 12. But for only 56 yards, and it start with Portis. Reversing direction, tank up to the 20-yard line, gain of a couple, it'll be second down and eight. Clinton Portis in a big, big, big one-for-one -one trade. You don't see that many in the National Football League. He goes to Washington last year. Champ Bailey goes the other way to play corner for Denver. He had great years with Denver. Last year, not a bad year. His numbers were pretty good compositely, but his yards per carry average was way off last season. He didn't look like the same guy at Washington as he was at Denver. Second and eight, they take it to him, and then Jamel throws out to the left side, and that's caught by Robert Royal. You go back and you take a look at what Portis did with Denver in his first year there, 2002, 1,500 yards, and then 1,591 in 2003. You see how many more times he carried the ball low last year? 343 carries for only 1,315. Only player in NFL history, a year-to-year -year increase of 50 or more carries, but 100 yards less rushing. It was a totally different type of offensive line the Denver Broncos and the types of things they do and the types of things the, the Redskin offensive line does. Third and three, and Brunel rolling to his right, throwing and passes incomplete, going down to the ground to try to get it was Santana Moss, who's been limited to one catch in the game for no net yards. And that's one that they should have had there. I mean, that's that's the thing that you try and do when a when a guy is running a sideline or comeback, you try and lead him back. And Santana Moss has to come back and get that one. I think Mark Brunel threw it exactly where it had to go. This will be Andy Groom's fourth punt of the game. And it's a very short one. That's going to set Dallas up in pretty good position. Except he does get a decent bounce and then Creighton will get back. And there's a hit at the end of the play, or at least the crowd thinks there was, at the 40-yard line, but there is no flag. And Dallas will take over at about that spot. Cowboys start track tonight. As we take a look at Bledsoe. 16 attempts, 57 yards. So he's averaging less than four yards per attempt. Jones is averaging three points per carry. And Glenn would be their number one receiver. Seven different Cowboys have caught passes tonight. But carry two for 14 yards. Cowboys are changing their center now. Andre Girard is in there. The bigger, stronger guy than Al Johnson. Girard moved over from Girard, who he played last year. And Jones is able to break one, but a flag is down. And maybe that's the reason he was able to break one as he picks up 14 pending the call from the referee Larry Nimmers. You're going to break one. That's where you're going to break it on the left side because that offensive line flows out Allen. Number 76. 10-yard penalty. Repeat first down. Adams are so good and and Flozell Adams is so good at holding. <laughs> yeah. You know, that offensive line, I was watching them the other day in practice and they look yeah. better than I've ever seen them. Here's Flozell Adams here. And you said, holy moly, that's a pancake. You gotta let a guy do that. Yeah. Did you see what he did? Yeah. I mean, he just his hands and turned, boom, just put him right in the ground. What the heck is wrong with that? Yeah, and that's why Adams was arguing the call. He said, what do I have to do? Oh, no, that's a block. That's, that's what, I mean, you live for those things. First and 20, a little toss back to Bledsoe from Jones. And out it goes, Terry Glenn for the touchdown. Mr. Sean Payton getting to call the plays first and 20 and goes to the back of the playbook for the Knights' first touchdown. Hey, you talked about a big play. Had it be coming. Who's going to get it first? The Cowboys got it first. Hands off here to Julius Jones. He pitches back to the Plateau, the old flea flicker. Gary Glenn is behind everyone. A 
and Drew Bledsoe makes a perfect throw. That's what you get when you, you get a guy, Sean Taylor, the safety there. He's very, very aggressive guy, number 21. He is going to take a little bite on any run action. He bit, so did Sean Springs. Cortez converts. And two minutes, nine seconds into the third quarter, somebody finally gets into the end zone. And it's Dallas. And it's 10-0. Hi, I'm Grant Balfour of Sydney Australia, playing for the Minnesota Twins. There he goes. Sheffield is right back to Balfour. He throws the second. In time. Back to first. The play. Be sure to watch Major League Baseball on ESPN Australia. Whisper Animal Rescue. It's less than a dollar a day. Join online now. WSPA.org.au. Make the world safe for the animals. Nothing bad will happen now. Major League Base on ESPN. As the competition intensifies, the opportunities evaporate. Every pitch, swing hat gets magnified as its outcome could define the season. Major Baseball's road to the playoffs. Thursday live on ESPN. This telecast is copyrighted by the NFL for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this telecast or of any pictures, descriptions, or accounts of the game without the NFL's consent is prohibited. There's a number you can donate by calling that number, NFL Hurricane Relief Weekend. Drew Bledsoe and Terry Glenn played together in New England. They linked there for 21 touchdown passes, 21 touchdown receptions for Glenn. The only guy who's caught more touchdown passes from Bledsoe throughout his career would be Ben Coates, who is on the receiving end of 45. As Lebeau Betts brings this back to the 32, and a flag is down. block in the back, number 50. 10-yard penalty from the spot of now. First down. That is Harry Campbell, reserve linebacker. Now let's watch that play again. Now, now here's Sean Taylor here. Here's Julius Jones. He's going to get the ball. Now watch him here in the clicker. You see, he's a, he's a cover two safety. He sees the run. He steps up. Now when he steps up, watch Terry Glenn right here get by him. Again, we'll do the same thing. The fake run, he's reading the run all the way. He sees it, he goes to step up, and by the time he sees Terry Glenn go by, it's too late, he's chasing the end zone. And he lost his footing to compound it, and that's your first touchdown, and that's followed up by a big time sack as the rookie Chris Canty to Virginia, one of three defensive ends chosen in the draft by Bill Parcells gets the sack. Chris Canty is going to be something special. I saw him in training camp, and I knew that this guy, I mean, he's big, and he's and he's fast, and he's quick, and he has moves, and, and everyone was talking about Chris Canty as a young Leon Lett. Remember Leon Lett? Sure. That's what Chris Canty looks like when Leon Lett was a rookie, a second-year guy. Leon Lett was hard to forget. Second down and 18. And Brunel's guns one out to the 22-yard line, and that's David Patton, who came over from New England as they've revamped the receiving core this year. They go to the smaller receivers, a la the Smurfs of the old days, and guys like Patton and Santana Moss. Well, Joe Gibbs wanted to get big plays, and that's why he went to Patton and Santana Moss. And I think you know, he had to get in a position in this third and fourth quarter while he calls some of those plays. Right now, they don't have the best field position to do it. Third and six in the 22. The Redskins still looking for their first touchdown of the season. One last week with three John Hall field goals. And that's 
incomplete intended for David Patton, and they're the only team in the NFL without a touchdown as we conclude week two. Yeah, one of the problems with changing quarterback, bringing your backup quarterback in in the first week is most of the training camp, most of the preseason, you have one guy, Patrick Ramsey, getting all the work, and the second guy doesn't get as much. And then you bring the second guy in, and he's a starter, and it doesn't look like Mark Brunel has great timing with receivers. The Sandy Groom comes in to punt. For the fifth time in the game, Patrick Creighton is back to run it back. Good kick. Creighton, who had six receptions last week in San Diego, brings this punt back up to the 33-yard line, where he's tackled by James Thrash. 11 minutes and 24 seconds remaining in the third quarter at the home of the Cowboys, with the hometown guys up attention. football from around the world. Magic, Pash talent with the League of the Stars and the Copa del Rey, live Spain. Power, courage and speed from the Netherlands with the League and the Amstel Cup. The FA Cup is together only the best in England. The Lachlan Barker each week from the US. Stick and precision in the most prestigious World Club events. Complete coverage of the UEFA Champions League. And if this isn't enough, the world qualifiers crown this exciting tour around the globe. Open your eyes to the beautiful game. Football around the world on ESPN. Texas, you look down upon downtown Dallas, a few miles to the west, Texas Stadium, Dallas has it from the 33-yard line to begin his drive with the Julius Jones run over the left side to the 35-yard line. Second down and eight, injury means opportunity back in 92, Don Mikowski got hurt, Brett Favre took over in Green Bay and they haven't supplanted him yet. And then you go back to 99 when Trent Green was going to be the Ram starter, hurt in preseason. Kurt Warner, out of nowhere, to lead him to the Super Bowl, two-time NFL MVP. Then Drew Bledsoe got hurt in September 2001. That opened the door for Tom Brady, and you know the rest. Brady with three rings, Bledsoe to Buffalo, and now to Dallas. Second down and eight from the 35-yard line. He goes, and it's Deshaun Johnson making the catch. He pulled it in, forced out of bounds, first down. You know, Bill Parcells was saying the other day that one of the things that Drew Bledsoe has to learn is when Keyshawn Johnson is open. He said Vinny Testaverde knew that because he played with him. Drew Bledsoe has to learn it. He doesn't get big cushion. I mean, it's not going to be a big cushion. It's going to be pretty close. But he has a big body that he knows how to use, and he will come up with it most of the time. And there's an example. And Bletso loses the ball, but recovers himself at the 43-yard line. You know, Bill Parcells talking about when he took over the team and how much success would they have and how quickly. He kept going back to the quarterback, and he inherited Quincy Carter back in 2003. Then Carter was dumped last year in training camp, and he brought Vinny Testaverde back. And Vinny had been his guy in New York with the Jets in 98, and now he hopes that Bledsoe can be what Vinny was in 98. Yeah, and, and I think all he wants to do is have him manage the game, which he's doing very well, have a good running game, and play excellent defense. 
And second and 12, that is caught at midfield, and it will be third and short after the tight end, Jason Witten. Who the Chargers took out of the game last week. They concentrated on him. He caught only one, and that left it wide open for Keyshawn and for Creighton. I'm impressed with this pass protection to let Jason Witten do these types of things here. He's, he's just running a hook against the linebacker, but but the thing that they've done is they have to give Drew Bletch a pass protection, and I think this group tonight has done an excellent job. I thought the Redskins would be all over Drew Bletch, but it, 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 Drew Bletch has not Third down in the score two, and they're going to go to the air. So Sean Payton opening it up to the outside. He goes, and it's incomplete. They did that earlier with success on a third and one. Then, of course, they had the flea for, flicker for the touchdown. And Peyton figures in a run situation with a jumbo backfield in effect and a fullback in the backfield or a tight end back there, he'd go to the air but incomplete. Yeah, and that's that's when it was only a two-receiver route. See, there's only two guys out. So either, either you're going to fool them and they're going to get open or you have to throw it away. Matt McBriar to punt. His fourth kick of the night. James Thrash is back. Tries to put a little backspin on it. And he does, and it's down at the eight-yard line. Troy, Emmett, Michael, all in the ring of honor, and they'll be in the booth when we come back to Texas Stadium. 10-0, Dallas. Any good for the walk away? Good hand, guys. I would say shake the player's hand and wish him good luck. And someday, I'm going to do that. I don't know what proper etiquette is necessarily. <laughs> I conduct myself in the best manner that I can. I, I just try to get up and walk away. If you play with class, you ought to leave with class. I like the Phil Helmet exit. If there weren't luck involved, I guess I'd win every one. What am I supposed to do? Nice hand. Nice. Good luck, everybody. I'll see you later. That's what I always do. Yeah, I'm real happy. <laughs> Good for you, buddy. Good luck the rest of the way. Yes. Awesome. Are you kidding me? <laughs> hey, God loves you, man. Let them go about their business because you're a spectator now. Why do I get this nervous? <laughs> Spanish football action continues this week live on ESPN. On Thursday, Ronaldinho, Eto, and Barcelona's powerful attack clash against Valencia. Then the Recalme and Portland's yellow submarine against the always dangerous Celta. And on Friday, the Real Madrid Galacticos face off against Athletic Bilbao. On Thursday, Barcelona, Valencia. Later, Villarreal, Celta de Vigo, and on Friday, Real Madrid against Athletic Bilbao. Spanish football only on ESPN. ESPN's Fight Night. The heavyweight WBO Asian Pacific title is in his hands, and undefeated Sultan of Regamov will do his best to keep it when he faces Friday Ahunanya. Wednesday on ESPN. Well, there's a two-man booth, and then there's a three-man booth, and then there's a five-man booth. The triplets are here after that great halftime ceremony. These guys, numbers retired, and try now the ring of honor as the Washington Redskins take over back at the eight-yard line in a 10-0 game, and Mark Brunel, the quarterback, will go to the air on first down and swing it to the outside, and that pass is caught by Cooley, but Cooley, as one official looks at the other, was out of bounds. Emmett, start with you. Just your feelings, the emotions after that great halftime ceremony where nobody went to the concession stand. <laughs> well, that's what I was a little teary-eyed for a second there, and uh, it got a little emotional when you start seeing the highlights of Troy and Michael coming th coming down, and then all of a sudden they show your highlights, and you that's hear... what he really likes. <laughs> <laughs> then, 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 you start, then you start realizing, like, something serious is about to happen. <laughs> so, I mean, it was a great moment. It really was. Yeah, the crowd was... I mean, they were stoked before the game about this as Brunel throws to the outside here and that pass is incomplete and a flag is down on the play and Michael what is it you, you were here the longest you were here from 88 you were here when things were tough and you've got a personal foul here defensively helmet to helmet roughing the quarterback against Dallas you were here when it was at the bottom 
and then Troy came along and then Emmett. And so then to stand there tonight, what was that like for you? Well, it was a great feeling. And, and to stand there with these two guys because, like you said, I, I've been here the longest, but we grew into all of this together. We made it all together. We made a commitment to, to stay together. And, and that's the great thing about it. I mean, we had a bunch of great guys that we played football with, and we thank God for those guys. But it is truly a blessing to go on with my very good friends right here at Emmett and Troy. Michael was here and when Tom Landry was the coach, and he left in, in 89. And then Jerry Jones bought the team, and Jimmy Jones came in, and Troy Aikman became the number one choice in the draft. As Brunel on first down after that penalty against Leroy Glover will give the ball to Clinton Portis to the outside. And then Troy, you start out one and fifteen. But when did you when did you guys know? How long did it take before you realize we've got something special happening? You know, it's a good question, Al. I think maybe at the uh, end of the 1990 season, maybe 91. But you know, I'm most proud of the fact that we enjoyed tremendous success together. And there's a lot of things that tear apart a team, but yet we didn't allow those things to tear apart us. It, it wasn't just isolated out to, to, to us three. There were a lot of great players, Jay Novacek, Gerald Johnston, Charles Haley, and others, that we really sacrificed individually in order for us to achieve the great things that we wanted to for our team. Second down and five after that five-yard gain by Portis, and Brunel is going to go deep over the middle, and that pass is incomplete with the flag. You know, that's what I always, I mean, I mean, you guys were really a team, and that's what it was all about, and, and the sacrifice and the toughness and everything that had to go with it. I remember Norv Perner, when he was the offensive coordinator, I saw him up here, you know, before a game one day, and I said, what are you going to do today? I thought, well, you know, I'll get a nugget here, and he said, well, <laughs> he said, is okay, going to get it? <laughs> no, he's going to get it, he's going to hand it to Emmett and, and throw it to Michael. Well, <laughs> that's, uh, that's you know pretty what? good. Here it is right yeah, here. And, and uh, the guy who's been overlooked in all of our successes, one, Jimmy Johnson, yes. two, North Turner. Exactly. Because without either one of those guys, there's no doubt in my mind that we've been able to go on and the success that we had, and I know that both Michael and Emmett agree with that. Yes, I remember that. once talking to you about it and saying, you know, there's not enough quarterbacks in the league to go around 32 teams. There's not 32 top quarterbacks. And you said, I'll tell you what's fewer than quarterbacks. Yeah. You said quarterback coaches. Second and team after the holding call. And that's Portis. And, you know, Troy, I was thinking about, you know, you've got free agency and you've got Jimmy leaving prematurely. You guys must muse about how many you might have won well <laughs> we do at times but to, you know what john you're absolutely right i think there's there's very few guys out there that can really put an offense together that allowed guys like us to have the success that we had and let's not discount what jerry jones meant to this organization he was willing to do anything that he could and there's not a lot of owners in this league that will commit themselves to win the way that he does third down and 12 and brunel on third and 12 flushed out one against the grain and that pass is caught by Moss deep downfield on a third and 12 to the 38 yard line. Little improvisation. Hey, he did a great job of scrambling around and buying himself some time and finding a wide open guy. Unfortunately, the coverage broke down. Well, you guys are in the broadcasting business, so you know we've got three analysts right here, Emmett. Well, I'm not as good as these two gentlemen behind me, but, uh, you know, this is my first time up in the booth actually looking at a game up here and, and calling it as I see it. So, you know, like I said, he did a great job of buying time. <laughs> 41 yards. First Troy works with Joe Fox. Fox is number one to Michael, part of the family at right. ESPN. And Emmett now with the NFL Network. Yes, yes. Enjoying my time over there with Rich Eisen and Terrell Davis on Mondays. From the Troy, third. I think your name is right under the booth here. Hey, that play clock went, went dead. They did. They got a delay of the game. Guys, great night for you. Go back and enjoy the rest of the evening. Thank you guys Fantastic. very much. Great to be here to see you all. Good to see you. John, you've always been the best. Thank you very much. Thank you, very much. Thank you, great. Thank you John. Thanks, Michael. Good to see you, everybody. Troy Aikman. There he is enshrined in the Ring of Honor. Emmett Smith, Michael Irvin. That's the way it should be. The triplets go in together on this very special night at Texas Stadium. the Giants and the Saints were in Texas Stadium. Dallas leads 10-0, but Washington has mounted this drive. They had the longest play of the night, a 41-yard pass.
to Moss, and now you've got Liddell Betts carrying. Betts the backup to Clinton Portis. So Washington not only trying to get on the board, but Joe Gibbs is seeking its first touchdown of the season. Well, you know, we were talking about how they were a little conservative, I thought, in the first half. I thought both sides were. Then the Cowboys came out. They opened up a little. And now on this drive, the Redskins are opened up. And what they needed was that pass that they got that out and up to Santana Moss. And that came on third down and 12. Now out of the shotgun on second down and 13. Brunel guns it over the middle into traffic. Cowboys say incomplete. And it is concurred by the umpire. David Patton was the intended receiver. You know, I think that's the stuff that the that the Dallas Cowboy defense is susceptible to. And that is the one that they got to Santana Moss is a, is a double move. I mean, he's thrown plenty of outs and plenty of, you know, hooks and, and comebacks and those kinds of things. And I think that double move, you know, that out and up or something like that is still there against this defense. Mike Zimmer was one of the few coaches Bill Parcells kept when he came in. Zimmer goes all the way back to the Barry Switzer era. Third down and 13. Brunel chased from behind, grabbed from behind, and sacked from behind by Scott Shanley. Yeah, Scott Shanley is a nickel linebacker, and that's that's what you want when you put a nickel linebacker in, a guy that can run. Because if they want to, if the quarterback wants to get get scrambled and start moving out, you need a guy to chase him down, and not only chase him down, but catch him. And when you put in that nickel linebacker, he better be able to run. And that brings Andy Groom into punt. Groom with a busy night. Short kick, fair court, 19-yard line by Patrick Creighton. 5-11 remaining in the third quarter. The Cowboys trying to go to 2-0 on a ring of honor night for the triplets. 10-0. Every time that close enough is not good enough. Every time the last minute seems like an eternity. Every time the defender shifts to slow motion. Every time 15 yards seems like an ocean. Every time a tie is completely out of the question. Every time technique overshadows power. We are there. With deeper coverage, wider coverage. With strong opinions. With unparalleled access. With unsurpassed expertise. Seven days a week. 24 hours a day. And it is this dedication to our fans that gives us the right to call ourselves the leader. The game's greatest hit play in one of the world's best football leagues. The Italian Serie A. The beautiful game lives in Italy. Next up, Lecce takes on Fiorentina. Thursday on ESPN. Takeaway was that Newman interception which led to a field goal. Betts fumbled, but that was toward the end of the half, so it was not costly. And the touchdown tonight came on the flea flicker. It was second down and 20. And a 70-yard free flicker. Let's say the make it into nothing. And this is Julius Jones, tackled there by Marcus Washington. You know, John, we were talking to Bill Parcells, and we mentioned at the top, he's been the coach for a little bit more than two calendar years. There are only seven guys from the pre-Parcells era. So we bring it up yesterday. We go, Bill, seven out of 53 in two years. And typical of Parcells, he had a one-word response. Good. <laughs> He probably thinks there should be four or five. <laughs> but that was his job. I mean, I mean, he had to come in here, and he had to turn this team around, and he had to clean it up, and he had to get better players, and, and you know, young and faster and all those things, and he's doing that. But he took over a team that had been five and 11 for three consecutive years, and the pass.
pass is incomplete here to make it third down. You know, and the, the guys that he brings in are a lot of players that have played for him at other places. 34, in fact, have played for Parcells with more than one team, and that is the most of any coach in history by far. Well, I think, you know, that's going to happen when you're the head coach of four teams. I mean, there's not a lot of that in history either. I mean, he was the head coach of the Giants and then the Patriots and then the Jets and now the Cowboys. So if you coach a lot of teams, you're going to have a lot of ex-players out there. You talked about it yesterday. You said, you know what, I just try to bring in good players. And, of course, it helps if you know the system and you know what kind of a guy he is and what it's like to play for him. I think that's so who hits Jones here, makes the juggling catch, and is able to convert. It's a first down. You know, everyone out there that hates to prevent defense can, can stand up right now and say, count me on this one, because what do you do in a prevent? They played this very soft. Three-man rush, everyone was off, and they let Drew Bledsoe hit underneath, and they were so soft, they gave him enough room to run for a first down. Yeah. I, mean, I, think, I think in this part of the game, you don't get that soft on third down. Split backs here, and they give it to Jones. And what they do in the backfield is they split the backs, but one of the backs is Jason Witten, who is the tight end. Nicholas Gene right there, Parcells is guys. Well, you go to Curtis Martin with New England and the Jets and then Dave Meggett with two different teams. He fires, went from the Pats to the Jets. Pepper Johnson, Giants and Jets. Richie Anderson was here until last year. Testaverde, of course, Jets and the Cowboys. Just some of the 34 that have played for Bill with at least two teams. Second down 11 from the 31 yard line. And Jones goes next to nowhere. See, we're talking about the Cowboys playing tonight without a fullback, so they have two tight ends. Jason Witten being the move guy, and that time it was Dan Camp was lined up in the backfield and it was a lead play, a four-hole lead play, so he became the, the lead back on that. Now, that's where, you, that's where you lose a little. You know, that a fullback is a better lead blocker, not as good a receiver, and not as good at the line of scrimmage. Third down and nine, and Lucas Washington is going to come off the field. He's shaken up. Play clock will start from 10 and 5. Washington has to come out for at least to play. Chris Clemens comes in to start. Third down and 10. They're in the three, three man nickel here. This is where they bring a lot of their exotic blitzes and they have six or seven defensive backs in there. And it's caught, but not a first down. 37-yard line, Jason Witten makes the catch, but the punting group will have to come in. And the Redskins have really blitzed very little. I thought that would be a big thing. They started out early in the game blitzing, and I think that the Cowboys, you know, gashed him with a couple runs. I think Bledsoe made a couple of passes, and, and they haven't run a blitz this half, and I don't remember towards the end of the half that they'd blitz much. Matt McBriar, this will be his fifth punt of the night. Andy Groom, his opposite number, has punted six times tonight. So 11 punts in the game, and that would figure in a 10-0 contest. And this one is a booming kick with side spin on it. <laughs> well, you can't eat his playing surface, but you can drop it like putting up a 70-yard wedge to the green. And that one was 58 yards from McBriar. Ends and deep, 10 nothing. Every time that close enough is not good enough. Every time the last minute seems like a burning. Every time the defender shifts to slow motion. Every time 15 yards seems like an ocean. Every time a tie is completely out of question. Every time technique 
over Hell's power. We are there. With deeper coverage, wider coverage. With strong opinion. With unparalleled access. With unsurpassed expertise. Seven days a week. 24 hours a day. And it is this dedication to our fans that gives us the right to call ourselves the leader. Tonight on EDM, get fast paced and to the point sports analysis on the interruption. Then, the latest news in the world of sports on SportsCenter. Part of Corruption and SportsCenter, only on ESPN tonight. It is the final. The New York Giants in a rare away game in their home stadium beat the New Orleans Saints 27-10. The Saints, of course, having to play away due to the after effects of Hurricane Katrina. The Redskins at their own four-yard line. Washington tonight averaging 3 points yards per rush and 3.6 yards per pass. So 3.6 per play period. You hold your opponent to 3.6 per play, you win a lot of games. A eight. lot of games. Yeah, they've had eight. Drive, six punts, two turnovers, three three and outs, 64 yards rushing, 82 yards passing. That's good defense. That ugly offense, and that pass is caught. At the nine-yard line by Taylor Jacobs, who gets tackled up at about the 13. Monday Night Football being brought to you by the full line of 2006 Volvos. Volvo for life. Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Dr. Pepper, one taste, and you get it. And Snickers, home of the state's hungriest fan. Aerial coverage provided by Bud Light. Too many to email Keith Jackson. Is, is that a possum hunting loon? Is that a possum hunting loon? No. It could be a possum moon. It could be a harvest moon, though. Close. Because they're, I know they're harvesting grapes now about this time of year. That time is of uh, the late summer, early fall, as Clinton Portis takes it up to the 21. Hmm. Now, I think a possum hunt moon is a little, little smaller. Well, it's a full moon. Last time we looked at it, I mean, it was orange. Yep. You can't beat a, a football game on a night of a full moon when it's 100 degrees down in the field. Now to Kelly Hayes, did you ask Keith Jackson at the college game to see if that was a possible moon or not? Inquiring minds need to know. From the 21-yard line, they're going to fake a reverse. And that doesn't fool number 94. That's DeMarcus Ware, one of their two number one draft choices. The 11th guy picked overall, had that spectacular preseason Monday night game at Seattle. Big play right here. You know what I like about DeMarcus Ware? He stays alive. I mean, Mike Sellers is trying to block him, and he gets his hands on him, holds it, holds it, holds it, plays off of Sellers and makes the tackle. And that will be the end of the third quarter with the Dallas Cowboys leading the Washington Redskins 10 to nothing. And Monday Night Football will continue after this message from our ABC station. I'm not, I'm not a gangster. You know, I'm not a thug. You know, I'm not in trying to be hard. If you ask me about that on the basketball court, then I say, yeah, I'm, I'm hard. I'm tough on the basketball court. But off the court, that ain't who I want my kids to feel like their daddy is. That's just my environment. That's where I came from. I can't be somebody else. All I can be is the best Allen Nelson that I can be. Can you be a poker player and not have a nickname? They call me the Quiet Lion. I'm a cousin Korea, baby. It's awesome, man. Great grammar. I love the colorfulness, uh, the different characters it creates. Crazy Horse. The Professor of Poker. PC. There's like 27 Steves and 80 Pete's. It's easier to remember a nickname than it is to remember the guy's real name. It's Miami John instead of John Cernudo. Geography has always been a popular source for finding a nickname. I'm Roller Slim. Texas Dolly. Crazy Canuck. Flying <laughs> At the poker table, you may find yourself next to a master. You sit next to Amanda Master. I move furniture, man, for a living. Sounds next to you. My nickname is Mike Mouth. God shall give it and 
God shall take us away. My nigga is Wookie? <laughs> of Friday Night Bites on ESPN. In 2000, the USBA and NAVA featherweight titles were on the line when an undefeated Angel Vasquez defended his belts against Southpaw Max Gomez. Friday on ESPN. Charles is uh, the flip of that. Yeah. John Madden, Sam Ryan filling in for Michelle Tafoya on maternity leave. The Redskins have lost 25 straight when trailing going into the fourth quarter. I'm going to sign right there, and right now they're trailing 10 to nothing from the 18-yard line. Skins have still not scored a touchdown in seven quarters this season. Cooley up to the 24. John, we're talking about harvest moons and possum hunting moons, and then there's a, a blue moon. Uh, a blue moon is how long it's taken the Redskins between touchdowns because their last one was last December. Yeah, and it, and it doesn't look like this offense has a good feeling for each other. I mean, it doesn't look like there's confidence out there. They feel that we can really do this. I mean, we can run the ball. We can throw it to our wide receiver. You know, I don't get that feeling that they feel confident in any of those things. Third down and seven from the 24-yard line. Brunel, under pressure, gets it away in the slot, and they convert here as Santana Moss makes the catch. So a couple of Cowboys were in the face that time of Brunel with Williams on a safety blitz and Glover coming from the middle of the defensive line, and he gets it away and converts. Yeah, and and that, that's one of the things that Roy Williams does well. He's a good blitzer. You see him come from the edge, and now these, these safeties... You know, you know, they're getting moves, pass rush moves like defensive ends and linebackers. And they, and they all have that move, dip that shoulder, get under, you know, go for the strip. They're doing the same thing linebackers are doing. The Dell Betts is the running back from the 33-yard line. No play. Full start. Full start offense number 89. Five-yard penalty, no first down. Moss, the wide out. Blasting in the past. Joe Gibbs looks awfully calm there for things that are going around. I, 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 I talked to him before the game. I was out in the bus and I pulled up and Joe came up and talked to me on the bus and he said his guts are just tearing him up inside. And he's always been that way. I mean, you know, Joe Gibbs back when you know, he had the Hogs and he was winning all those games, he would always say that you know, his guts are just tearing him up. And they have to be right now with his team not able to get into the end zone and more than seven quarters of action on first and 15. And Brunel will get chased and then get hogtied by Anthony Henry with the horse collar rule in effect, but not right there because he had him by the shirt. Yeah, I mean, you have to watch out that you don't horse collar when you hogtie. <laughs> right. You, know, you can hogtie, but you can't horse collar. But this is all about coverage. And just watch. I mean, it's a zone coverage, and, and everyone is reacting. Every, everyone's in their zones. Everyone is, 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 is shortening down, taking things away, taking the underneath away, squeezing everything on Mark Brunel. So that wasn't anything except great coverage. Second and 11 from the 32. And another short pass is incomplete because Al Singleton got there as soon as the ball got to the hands of Robert Royal. Yeah, you just don't feel the Redskins have anything that can, anything in their offense that can pressure you. Yeah, I, mean, I, mean, I mean, you have to get something where you, you, know, you have to worry about things deep so you can hit underneath so you can get some running games, but it seems like against this offense you can just keep everything easily right in front of you. Just one big play tonight, that 41-yarder to Moss. Third down and 11 from the 32-yard line. Brunel gets excellent protection, but then he lost one that's good and dropped, incomplete. And on third and 11, I mean, how often are you going to be able to convert on a play like that to Clinton Portis? 
Well, you're not you're not going to be because one thing that the the Cowboys do when they get their nickel defense in there, they're all good tacklers, and and you may gain one or two or three yards, but you're not going to get the whole thing. Andy Groom, the seventh punt of the night, good deep kick, 12 yard line, back for Creighton. And he gets tackled up at the 22-yard line by Mike Sellers. 12-25 remaining in the fourth quarter. Defense, defense, Dallas. 10-0. Hurricane Katrina has ravaged Mississippi, Louisiana, and Alabama, places that we call home. Hundreds of thousands of people have been affected including our own family and friends. The road to recovery will be long and hard, but we can all join together to help these communities rebuild. Donate to the American Red Cross. Don't sit on the sidelines. The victims of Hurricane Katrina need our support. Open your eyes to the world of sports with ESPN. Americans are as passionate play sports as Australians, and it comes through loud and clear with our coverage of the top leagues and teams from North America. The pennant races in Major League Baseball are red hot, and you have the best seat in the house with ESPN's expanded coverage of baseball. Are you ready for some football? The NFL on ESPN comes at you each and every week of the season with live coverage of the rough and rugged world of American football. Number one draft pick, Andrew Bowen. Bogut makes his professional debut when the new NBA season begins in November. And the women players show their drive to compete in WNBA action. The top golfers at the PGA hit the links while the legends battle in the Champions Tour. Great action year-round on ESPN. The game's greatest players play in one of the world's best football leagues, the Italian Serie A. The beautiful game lives in Italy. Next up, Lecce takes on Fiorentina, Thursday on ESPN. Ten to nothing. Dallas Cowboys trying to go to two and zero. Giants winning tonight. Giants are two and zero. Philly one and one. And Washington will be one and one as Dallas wins tonight. And they begin here with Julius Jones with a nice burst over the left side. And he picks up eight yards behind Larry Allen and Flozell Adams. It's a nice little uh, escort. Well, again, that's that's the side that you want to run to because it doesn't get much more powerful than this. When you have a Larry Allen or Flozell Adams right there, I mean, they're, they're as strong and as powerful as you can get. <laughs> Look what Larry Allen does. He just takes his guy, puts him right to the ground. They seal off everything to the inside and just run right off it. We've seen that act before. Any guy that can bench press 700 pounds has to be able to block down on a defensive tackle. Amazing. Second and two. Let's drop it. Gives it to Jones, and Jones comes close to getting the first down. Appears to be just a little short. What do 700 pounds look like if you go into the gym? What does 700 pounds look like when uh, Larry Allen's lifting it? We're going to show you. Here it is. Lock it. There it is. <laughs> look at the celebration. The guy dove right over him. You need three guys spotting. Those three guys spotting probably couldn't have handled their third. <laughs> third and a short one. There's some two time in motion to the inside. There's a fake cross. And Whitten makes the catch up at the 37 yard line. You see Larry Allen on that last play. He didn't even have his uh, a mouth guard in. Illegal motion on the offense. Number 19 went forward at the snap. Five-yard penalty. Repeat third down. Keyshawn just just started to turn upfield as he moved to the inside. Yeah, and that's the one that they're calling tighter this year. You know, because I think they were letting them get away with that a year ago. But you have to come in and you know and crack on a defensive end. You will tend to start up the field. 
And there's not a lot of wide receivers that will come in. I mean, there's not a lot of coaches that will ask their wide receiver to come in and crack on a defensive end. But Keyshawn Johnson is one of those guys. Keyshawn is 6'4 and 210 pounds. Third down and six now after the penalty back at the 28-yard line. Blood so. He's going to go deep. He's going to go for Glenn. And he's going to hit Glenn again. Terry Glenn, who has scored the old touchdown of the game. And Bledsoe says, come on, keep it up. Let's get downfield. We've got him on the run to the 29-yard line. You know, they always talk about Drew Bledsoe, that he holds the ball too long, but he does let his guys get deep. And if you can pass protect like this, and the Cowboys have been pass protected well all night, then Drew Bledsoe can have time to make these throws down the field to Terry Glenn. 43 yards, Glenn's caught four now for 127 receiving yards in the 29-yard line. Jones to the 24-yard line. Yeah, I think a big part of this story is that Drew Bledsoe hasn't been sacked. I really thought that the Redskins you know, had such a good defense and Greg Williams did so many things, blitzing and so on. Knew Drew Bledsoe was going to blitz him a lot right up the middle and, you know, would really make it tough. They haven't sacked him. I think they've only hit him once or twice and knocked him down once. So you can say Drew Bledsoe is doing a great job of getting the ball out of there. I think Sean Payton is doing a great job of calling plays. And this offensive line tonight is very special. Tremendous. Second down and five from the 24-yard line. You saw Bledsoe just went past United and threw a passing yard. Next up will be Joe Tanner, and next up is a first down after Julius Jones on his 19th carry of the night takes the ball down to the 17 or 16 yard line. First down. Al Johnson is back in at center. You know, that's one of the offensive line positions that they rotate. And you're going to see he gets a pretty good block there. He just stays with his guy and gets him going to the outside, then gets him down just as Julius Jones goes by. You know that old deal, sometimes, you know, the run will open up the pass, and a lot of times, I think we're seeing it right now, the pass or the deep pass has opened up the run. Cowboys start this down at their own 24. And there's leg. You know, John, you're talking about this offensive line for Dallas. To me, one of the most amazing things is the science of drafting. And you look at Dallas through the years, and they've made, Holding obviously, offense, some great choices. Number 73. Ten-yard penalty. Repeat first down. Troy Aikman and Michael Irvin and Emmett Smith in the first round. Look at this. 300 consecutive games. No offensive lineman who was drafted in the first round has started. You have to go back 20 years. Howard Richards, you have your Flozell Adams and your Larry Allen, and all the guys who led the way through the years for Herschel Walker and Emmett Smith all of those years, and now Julius Jones, not a single first-rounder has started on the offensive front. Right, and how about this Rob Petiti, the rookie we are talking about, the right tackle right there. He's a sixth-round pick. Now, if you would redraft him again, I'll guarantee you there'll be some first-round picks. <laughs> oh, yeah. Larry Allen will probably be the first player chosen in the draft. Now you got the rookie Tyson Thompson in the backfield he's a as fast as they come a rookie out of san jose state a free agent who's made the team cedric kellings made the stop bill parts telling us before that game in seattle we're going to see a lot of thompson we didn't see him at all that night but he's in there tonight yeah we saw him in a uh, tape in a preseason game in arizona and he was faster than anyone on the field and i said this guy is really something special what did he have here he was he's from irving right right here he played here I think in a high school game, he gained over 500 yards. 528 rushing yards. Second and 18. And the crowd, of course, has been reading all about him, and they've been playing preseason, so they got excited when he got the ball there as Lamar Marshall makes the tackle. I think he's probably the first local high school player that has ever played for the club. I think out of Irving. I think so. They believe he is. You know, that's, that's the kind of thing that Bill Parcells does, too. And, and I've always believed in, you know, if you're not sure of a guy, you know, and you're signing a free agent or, or a late-round draft choice, you always take either size or speed. You don't take a tweener in any one of those areas. You can take a big guy or a fast guy. This guy's fast guy. The third down and 15 coming up. 
and Bledsoe will let the clock tick all the way before taking a timeout. It's a five minute, 46 second drive already as they try to cement it. 10 nothing. On Foxtel Box Office, meet the animal with something to prove. You weren't supposed to hear that. Well, subdivide me and Kentucky fry me. He's a zebra. How come none of them have stripes? Just unlucky, I guess. Who thinks he's a racehorse. i never seen a black horse with white stripes before, you know? Well, obviously, that's the racetrack referee. <laughs> <laughs> before all bets are off, <laughs> this patent pony <laughs> will have you seeing stripes. You're doing great. Cheer to your horse. Racing stripes. Get out of there, Scots. That's the man's espresso. I know. I'm expressing myself. <laughs> Starts Thursday, September 22, only on Foxtel Boxers. This Friday on Nick, there's only one award show where kids choose who wins, who loses, and who oozes. Nickelodeon's Australian Kids' Choice Awards 2005. Co-hosted by Servo's David James, with Jesse McCartney, Guy Sebastian, Marge Crew, Andrew G and James, Ian Thorpe, Bucky Latek and the Billabong Pro Skate Team, plus the hottest stars of TV, movies and more. It's the only show that gives you the stars you love blind. Nickelodeon's Australian Kids' Choice Awards 2005, premiering PM Friday, only on Nick. It's the time of your life. Well, over the last 15 meetings between the Cowboys and the Redskins, this hasn't been much of a rivalry. The Cowboys have won 14 of those meetings. It's been an incredible stretch of dominance in the now 91 all-time meetings. The Cowboys looking to make it 15 of 16. 10 to nothing, Dallas. It's still down 15 after that timeout. The Tyson time goes nowhere. So now Cortez will have to come in for a 40 yard field goal attempt. And the crowd starts, well, I guess they, they what I mean, Sean Payton tonight's been tremendous on third and long, and they had a flea flicker for a touchdown. But you know what? Uh, you know, what have you done for me lately? Yeah, I would boo him on that one, though, too. I mean, you're <laughs> third and long, and you just run a straight handoff right, right into the middle of the line. I mean, do so, you know, I mean, run a draw, run a straight. If you don't want to air it out, then, you know, you know do something with a chance. That, that was a give-up play. They had no chance. And after the timeout, maybe they had too much time to think about it. 41-yard attempt here by Cortez. He's good. His second of the game. They tack on three more. Under six minutes to play. 13-0 Dallas. Every time that close enough is not good enough. Every time the last minute seems like an eternity. Every time the defender shifts to slow motion. Every time 15 yards seems like an ocean. Every time a tie is completely out of the question. Every time technique overshadows power. We are there. With deeper coverage, wider coverage. With strong opinions. With unparalleled access. With unsurpassed expertise. Seven days a week. 24 hours a day. And it is this dedication to our fans that gives us the right to call ourselves the leader.
Duke Ruiz came to Texas, to Houston, and to San Antonio, also to Dallas. Many were at Reunion Arena, more at the Dallas Convention Center, as the folks in Texas opened up their hearts and facilities to many of the evacuees. As James Thrash gets back to receive this kick for the Washington Redskins, Jose Tez to kick Dallas on top, 13 to nothing. They'll head west next week, take on San Francisco. Washington has a bye, an early bye in week three. up to the 24-yard line. Brunel and company go to work, and we check in with Sam Ryan. Sam. Well, Al, you've been talking about hurricane disaster and relief. Washington Redskins linebacker LeVar Arrington and his wife, Trisha, they wanted to do something other than just writing a check, so LeVar told me they actually thought about it, and they helped out the evacuees, 250 of them. They brought them shopping last week to Walmart, giving them gift cards of $200. Now, LeVar told me the one thing really stuck with him, that a gentleman came up to him and said, I have a job interview tomorrow. I didn't have anything to wear not only have you given me clothing but you've given me confidence al well, thank you sam a lot of players have done some tremendous things over the past three and a half weeks there's the pass to david Patton is incomplete it'll be second down and you've got uh, Patton coming off slowly you have to like the way the the cowboys have, have been rotating the players as we said earlier bill parcells had 22 active defensive players He's been rolling them all night. And I think it's starting to show right here now in the fourth quarter where they still look relatively fresh. And that was the case last week against San Diego. Brunel rolling to his right, going against the grain, hitting his man Cooley on the run. And Cooley gets taken down. And you got a, another long helmet here from Scott Shanton. Dude, did you ever wonder why they, why they rotate defensive guys all the time and they never rotate offensive linemen? Yeah, we were talking about that yesterday. I get, I get, you know, Illegal contact on the defense, number 26. Penalty is declined. First down, Washington. Meanwhile, Shanley comes out bloodied, but we would assume unbowed. Uh, he better he better get something stuck up in there to stop that bleeding. It's going to go right down into his mouth. Yeah, in the NBA, he'd be out of the game right now. He better get his stuff fixed. I don't think he had that second chin strap piece on. No, see, he still has one loose. Blood all over the front of his uniform. First down and 10 from the 38-yard line. And Brunel is going to go deep down the left side, but the coverage is very good. Intended for Taylor Jacobs, wearing Gary Clark's old number, covered there by Anthony Henry. Bill Parcells. He's like a, a great relief pitcher. Comes in with the lead, and if he has a 15 or more point lead any time in the fourth quarter, 77 and 0. And you know why that is? Because he always builds his team with a good running game and good defense. And if you can lead and you can run the ball and control it, and you have good defense, that will be your record. Second and 10. 10 to 38. Pressure on Brunel. see a sack and that's what happened here i think brunel saw it too because you know his left hand and that's on his left side so roy williams came from that side mark bell saw it all the way there was just nothing he could do about it but here comes roy williams from the outside that was the side brunel was looking right at but he's just too quick that's close to a horse collar too well it's okay to horse collar quarterback I mean, I mean, why it is, I don't know, but it's not illegal if you horse collar a quarterback. That's a sack and a half. That's a 17-yard sack, and now you've got Brunel, and Brunel with some moves up to 45-yard line. Mark with a little deke and a fake, and up to the 45, so it was third and a mile, and now it's fourth and three with 27 remaining. Rushing down by 13 will line up to go for it, but first... They will discuss it as Gibbs takes a timeout. Washington's going to stay alive. Down by 13.
after the timeout. It's fourth down and two for the Washington Redskins. They have to go for it from the 46. And a floating pass is caught by James Mack, and they've got the first down. So it was third down and 27. Brunel then took off for a 25-yard gain on a run. And this pass here on fourth down and convert. And they keep it going, and they are inside 35-yard line. And watch what happens. It's Roy Williams, again, is going to come on him. And he's going to see it this time and get rid of it quickly. What? Well, here comes Roy Williams again. He knows I've seen that guy before. My outside guy, I have to get rid of it right now. Shotgun. And then Brunel juggles the snap as a flag for the snap. Full start offense number 77. Five yards to me. Still first down. That's Rand Thomas, the ex -jet. Brunel, that's quite in contrast to what's happened tonight to Mr. Bledsoe. Yeah, I know. He's been hit six times, knocked down three times, been sacked five times, and coming to this game, I kind of felt that the Redskins defense would probably be putting something like that through Bledsoe, and the Cowboys and Bledsoe, on the other hand, look, one hit, one knockdown, Drew Bledsoe hasn't been sacked. Because neither have the uniform loss. First and team. Brunel, don't deep, and it is incomplete. We have three Cowboys back there covering Jacobs. You had Anthony Henry and Roy Williams and Keith Davis, the two safeties in the left corner. Well, Roy Williams is a player. He's been all over the field tonight. We've seen him make tackles like a linebacker. We've seen him run like a defensive lineman. And here we see him play safety like a defensive. He's a deep guy. He'll come in right now. Got the ball at the highest point. The thing it went through his hands and in a face mask. That's what you try and do as defensive back. You try and get up and get the ball at, at, at its highest point. Second down and 15. Brunel thrust on him. Has to throw it away. Pressure put on that time. He had Kenyon coming, coming after him, and along with Eric Abagu. Uh, he was trying to throw a slant out here to the right side. One thing about a slant, it's a timing pattern. If there's a guy on the inside, you better throw it. So he had to bring the ball down. You see he's going to throw the slant right here. And you see that it's for, because the safety starts to come over. That's not, but he has to pull it down. There's a guy inside waiting right there. Not gone third down team. Brunel hangs in there, and the pass is incomplete. He's trying to throw it to Liddell Betts. The running back to now walking in with 3.55 on the clock. Now a fourth and long. Do you think Liddell Betts kind of felt that win back there? Yes, you. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> there was someone there that was good, good linebacker coverage. And if he catches that, there's going to be a collision. So whether he catches it or not, you may as well take the collision. Crowd rising. Dallas defense pitching a shutout. 13 nothing. They have it to the 24-yard line to convert. Brunel hanging in. Going deep, and the pass is caught for a touchdown by Santana Moss. And the Washington Redskins finally get into the end zone in 2005. And that was the thing that everyone had to be calling for. You know, you bring in a Santana Moss. And he's going to be your deep threat. You'd have a lot of big plays last year, but you're bringing him in and make the big play. Here he is. He's going to run a post. You, you start to the to the outside, then you go back to the inside, then and then come deep. And I think Brunel made a perfect throw there because he had to get it overhead of Roy Williams. But that was kind of a post corner post. And Glenn covering and Moss and Glenn have seen a lot of each other practice through the years as former Jets. The extra point by Nick Novak who replaces injured John Wall. He makes his NFL debut. The extra point is good. And with 3.46 on a fourth down play, the Washington Redskins pulled within six. Open your eyes to the beautiful game as ESPN brings you the best football from around the world. Magic, passion, and talent with the Libra size and the Copa del Rey live from Spain. and speed from the Netherlands with the league and the Amstel Cup. The FA Cup bring together on the best in England. The Asian soccer each week in the U.S. Still tactic precision in the most prestigious World Club event.
Preacher to you with the Champions League. And if this is enough, the world qualifies has crowned this exciting tour around the globe. Open ride a beautiful game. Football around the world on ESPN. The most fantastic um, sport moment I saw was um, Andre de Souza. He got knocked out of the uh, Obong Junior World Championships in 2005, North America. Um, it was basically all the um, heat, and he still was busting airs on the final wave off to the beat. It was just really inspirational to know, even though he lost, he was still trying his best. For your next edition of Sports Center, all the top stories from around the world of sports. Right now, back to Monday Night Football. They're getting a little closer. Yeah. All season long, Dallas gave up only two fourth down conversions. The opponents were two of some. That drive, Washington converted a fourth and two and a fourth and 15 right here. And this is a big one. We see Santana Moss here, the outside guy. Now, we're going to also get a post here, and Roy Williams reacts to this post, then has to turn and doesn't get back to the Santana Moss post. Watch who Williams here, you see? Sees that inside post right there. He turns. Now, when he turns his shoulders, that allows Santana Moss to get in behind him and Mark Brunel to throw the ball over him. So they got lost for the big play and turned in a couple in tonight. He scored four for 89 yards. That kept him in the game. Nick Novak did his touch kicking at Maryland and was in the Cowboy camp briefly. And replaces John Hall, at least temporarily, with that kickoff there that is back up to the 31-yard line by Tyson Thompson. Week three, Monday Night Football next week will be in Denver, Kansas City 2-0 against the Broncos 1-1. One one. Sunday Night Football, the Giants are 2-0. They'll take on Chargers in San Diego on Sunday night. Now, it's going to be interesting right now to see if the Redsons uh, start to pressure Bledsoe. You know, because they, I think early they came out and they were going to blitz. Bledsoe got rid of the ball. He was able to throw the ball. They gashed him with the run a couple times. So then the Redskins laid off with the blitz. It'll be interesting to see if they crack with it now. An interesting play calling here because they're averaging only 2.9 yards a rush. That's is going to go to the air. And that pass is incomplete. And for Keyshawn Johnson. Two timeouts plus a two-minute warning left for Washington. You think that we you know the way Parcells has played through the years. He loves to play clock ball. He's had the running game. But tonight, that Washington defense is stymied. You've got Jones carrying team times for six, five yards. Only 2.9 per rush tonight for Dallas. And Keyshawn was upset on that one because he was wide open now. On a Bill Parcell team, we talk about things to do. Second and ten is a rundown. He's true again. And an effective running down as it's a, an eight-yard pickup. And then Wall Harris got him up high. Jones and a contendee also grabbed the face mask. The crowd wanted a flag. There was a flag. I think the official agrees face with the crowd. Mask. They do. Five yards, number 27. Would have been a third and two, and now it's a first down and more time the clock. You know, it's impressive, Al. Watch, watch Julius Jones as he as he slides here to stay in bounds. You know, when you have the lead and you get, you know, in the last three minutes or so, you want to stay in bounds on time. You never want to go out of bounds. You don't want to stop the clock. Absolutely. Like he saw that he was going out of bounds, and he just went into a slide. 34-yard line is first down. After the three, 13-7 Cowboys. Three and a half to go. Placing in motion. Gain of a yard and a half, maybe two, on the 21st carry of the night for 75 yards for Jones. And Washington is going to take timeout right here. And that is their second. So Gibbs is going to use his timeouts early and force the issue. Yeah, we talked about the Cowboy defense, you know, and how well they played. And Roy Jones, I mean, Williams has been all over the place. And you, you look here, and he's he's a safety, and he, and he comes on a blitz. He's a guy that hits Mark Burnell. 
He makes a tackle that forces a fumble. Here he's on the edge like a passer should get underneath and come up on Mark Brunel. Here he comes, sneaks up in the outside. Brunel sees him, but he can't do anything about it. He's been hitting as hard as Roy Jones tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Roy Jones has another fight coming up, too, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Tommy Hearns may have two. I think he does. Having father and son fights now. <laughs> well, Roy Williams has hit like Roy Jones. But you know, the reason that, that, that Bill Parcells always runs on second and long is so he has a third and manager. He's, he doesn't want to throw a complete pass on second and long and then come up with third and long where they can really, you know, throw all their blitzes at you. Second down and eight now from the 46 yard line. They have nine in the box, and Bledsoe is going to go to the air. And so hit as he throws, and that's thrown into the bench. And so that's perfect for Washington's defense. Ronaldo win, put the pressure on because they took the timeout. They're not compelled to use another timeout. They still have one. They still have the two-minute warning, and now it's third down and eight for Dallas. Yeah, I'm surprised that Sean Payton called a, called a pass on that play because now they get that long situation. And this is where Greg Williams really likes to bring the heat. So any play that, that Sean Payton calls here, you better be able to pick up blitzes. There is Greg Williams, head coach of Buffalo, the defensive coordinator for Jeff Fisher of Tennessee. They walk the corner. Let's throw it to the near side, and the sliding catch is made by Keyshawn Johnson. He has that down to a science. And he has a flag down back at the 38-yard line. The call is going to go against Dallas. Redskins really surprised me on that. They just rushed four men. They had a four defense lineman, and that's all they brought. And if you do that, and you, and you get them pass protect like this, and give Drew Bledsoe time, I mean, here you have a holding right here. But, but if he has time, he is going to be able to do these kinds of things. Uh, I didn't, you know, again, he's kind of out of the thing there, but I didn't see Flozell Adams holding. I didn't either. That's just going to call against him tonight. The other one was a dubious call. Third down and 18. Now these are Greg Williams blitz type situations, but against the Cowboys and, 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 and Drew Bledsoe from the from the first couple series on, he hasn't been doing it. In fact, he told someone he was going to blitz like 80 percent of the time, and he's probably blitzed about five or ten percent of the time. Subterfuge. I know Parcells expected a lot of it. Gretzo expected a lot of it. Sean Payton expected a lot of it. This offensive line expected a lot of it. Third down and 18. Just outside 35-yard line. The four-man rush. Line does it shot. Whitten makes the catch. We're well short of the first down. He's wrapped up first by Walt Harris at about the 49-yard line. So now Dallas is forced to punt. Washington will use final timeout. So they have almost three minutes, and they get to stop the clock at the two-minute warning, so they have plenty of time. But that was still a big play for the Cowboys because it, it bought them about 15 or 20 yards of field position. And the Redskins are going to get ball, but they're not going to have very good field position. Must have been something in the water right around the top. coaches and Gibbs of course is in the Hall of Fame Parcells will probably wind up there one day Gibbs went into the Hall of Fame because it looked like he was definitely retired so they put him in the only coach who retired and then got enshrined in the Hall of Fame and came back was Paul Brown and Parcells keeps going in and out and they'd like you to be retired before puts you in there McBriar's punt is too deep and that come out to the 20-yard line. So they'll have to go 80 yards in 252 without a timeout for the two-minute stoppage. Monday Night Football. It's just being brought to you by Coors Life. Proud to support tonight's game and the ongoing relief effort. Autotrader.com. The smart way to buy and sell a car. And see a satellite radio. It's more than just radio. It's 
Sirius Satellite Radio. You know, we talked about how the, the fans stayed there in their seats for the, the halftime ceremony. Troy Aikman, Michael Irvin, Emmett Smith. They're also staying in those same seats for the entirety of this game. Washington hasn't won here in nine seasons. And that is pulled out in the flat by Clinton Portis. Washington's last win in this park was 1995. As we said, 14 of the last 15 meetings between two teams has been won by the Dallas Cowboys. Dan Snyder bought the team in 99, so he has to see his team win a game in the stadium. Now, this is when you find out about your offense and defense. This is what good offense is. When you can make plays in this situation, good defense is when you can stop those plays. From the 30. Going to go in deep from Washington. He makes the catch. And Santana lost for a touchdown. Wow. And again, it's Lance and Williams on the coverage. He beats the same two guys. Unbelievable. He just outran him. And Mar Brunel got it out there. That's what I'm saying. This is offense. This is defense. You play great defense the whole game, but you have to make a play here. You can play lousy offense the whole game, but you have to make a play here. And the team that makes the play is the team that's going to win. 70 yards to Moss, and so the Redskins go almost two full games with a touchdown, and then they get them back to back, and the extra point will give them the lead. Hey, that's what Joe Gibbs wanted Santana Moss for. We didn't have enough big plays. We wanted Santana Moss to make them for him. Looked in the tap like they weren't going to try. Then they came out here in the second half, and he's made a couple big, big, big ones for him. So far, so is 77 and Omar. On the fence. That five yards will be added on the kickoff. It's a good penalty, so they don't give those guys a free shot on the extra point. Right. It used to be that there's, you know, a penalty, but you wouldn't take it, you know, in this extra point, and a guy would get over the center. You know, in, in, in grammar school, high school, you have no canning the center, but there's no no canning the center rule. And Novak bangs him through in his NFL debut. So with 235 reigning in regulation, it's now 14-13, and the Cowboys have two timeouts and the two-minute warning. Well, Jaron Glenn is number 26. Roy Williams is number 31. We see Antana Moss down here in the right, and he is just going to split the two, going to run right between Roy Williams and Aaron Glenn. That's what speed does, and that's what a good throw does. I mean, I mean, this is why you say, you know, you know, when you have a coverage, you like to have someone up bump these guys so you throw them off stride. When a guy like Santana Moss can run, that's just like running a hundred yard dash in a track meet. I mean, he's just running straight through. No one, no one reroutes him. No one does anything to him. He just runs right through and past beyond you. Then. What a play by Mark Brunel and Santana Moss. Two of them for Jerry Jones. He can't believe what he's just seen. His team on the verge of pitching a shutout, and now they're down a point. You know, and the Redskins just kind of hung in there. You know, I mean, they weren't doing anything offensively. They weren't being aggressive. They weren't pressuring defensively. But Dallas didn't run away with a spoon either. You know, so it was still there for them to take it. The Cowboys left them there, and the Redskins just hung in and kept going and going and going. Now it's the Cowboys' chance. Novak ready to kick off. So on this night, when the crowd, and they're always into the Redskins and the Cowboys, and they had so much going for them tonight with the triplets enshrined at halftime. It looked like they were going to go to no. Had things in hand all of a sudden in a dog fight. Down by one. Tyson Thompson back to return the kick. Novak sends it skyward. Comes out of the two yard line. This is a rookie Tyson Thompson. A pass 20 that bursts the feed. And Novak, the kicker, makes the tackle at midfield. Boy, we knew that he was impressed because he has speed. He has great speed. He did this thing the right way. He takes 
it right up into his wedge. Versus wedge makes a little move right there and then uses his speed. If he wasn't that close to the sideline, that could have been a touchdown. Because kickers aren't great tacklers, but when they have the sideline like this to help them, they can get a guy out of bounds. Just make contact. 49-yard kickoff return. Taylor Jacobs is hurt. It's the reason for the stoppage on the field. Playing on special teams. They're number four wide receiver. So the Cowboys will have the ball when play resumes at the 48. Needed a play from Tyson Thompson. He gave it to him because this is great field position here for the Cowboys. This is something the Redskins go like 55 minutes and don't score a point. Then in two minutes, they score 14 points. Amazing. Game over. And I don't have because they just were so dink dunk tonight and they couldn't get anything going. And the offense lacked imagination. And you thought that the Skins would go all season without scoring a touchdown. And it had that feel. And then all of a sudden, you have two fourth down conversions. You've got a fourth and two, which they converted to a 25-yard run by Brunel. Then you've got a fourth and 15. And again, you've got left corner and Williams to safety. And then they do it again. I tell you, that's what Sweet can do to you. You know, the, the Cowboys are either tired and they're a step behind, or they didn't realize the speed of St. Anna Moss because one guy shouldn't be able to just run right past and, and through two guys. Well, that's Taylor Jacobs. And you can see his hands moving. Maybe you were right about that December thing earlier, Al. <laughs> that's right, that's right. Or maybe that guy hurt you. <laughs> he was always <laughs> I, what, I, I told you. Yeah. <laughs> we put Santa Claus on. It was only, as they say, it was only 99 in Irving today. That, that, that outfit will be at the dry cleaner tomorrow. It better be. Hey, well, good news is Jacob sits up. They're going to get him up. Well, we finally got under 100. But I'll tell you, that, I mean, you know, you know, linemen in something like this will lose as much as 20 pounds. I mean, I'm some of those big linemen. I'm thinking about becoming a lineman of six days. Yeah, but then when you drink fluids and you get, get it back, the weight goes right back. You know, you wonder if a guy only has like 8% body fat. Can you, well, you can't lose 20 pounds. No, 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 but, but then they'd be wide receivers and deep yeah, exactly. backs and stuff. But they're the ones that, you know, that when they have a little body flat, uh, 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 fat, uh, they tend to cramp up, you know, when they, when they do get dehydrated. And maybe even pull muscles and stuff like that. The big guys just, just sweat all the way up. Not that it was out here. You and I used to four times walk into the lobby. <laughs> Bozell Adams was like pound. The other day, he was like a pound under 340. I bet he'll be under 330 right now. And right now, the Cowboys have it at the 48 yard line. If he was able to catch the field in one power. Two time ass plus the two minute warning. 228 to go. They start with Jones. Jones, knifing over the right side, takes the ball 42-yard line. You know, now the, now the Cowboys think of field goal position here, too. I mean, I think that's the first thing. You have two goals. One is first get in field goal position, and then your second goal, of course, is to score a touchdown. Jose Cortez is the kicker. Looking down to the two-minute ring without a huddle on second down and four. That's it up and up toward the front. Here goes to the outside for Witten. That is incomplete. And that will take us to the two-minute warning with 157 to play. In regulation, and the Washington Redskins striking quickly, twice, on top, 14-3. There's a fire catching around the world. And if cricket is your game, this is your show. ESPN's end, ICC Cricket World. The only show of its kind from the game's highest authority, the International Cricket Council. Exclusive interviews, in-depth features, full access to every aspect of the world of cricket. ICC Cricket World on ESPN. Spanish football action continues this week live on ESPN. On Thursday, Ronaldinho, Eto, and Barcelona's powerful attack clashes Valencia. Then the Recalme and Portland's yellow submarine against the always dangerous Celtic. And on Friday, the Real Madrid Galacticos face off against Athletic Bilbao. On Thursday, Barcelona Valencia. 
Later, Villarreal, Celta de Vigo, and Friday, Real Madrid against that big bill. Spanish ball, only on ESPN. The game's greatest players play in one of the world's best football leagues, the Italian Serie A. The beautiful game lives in Italy. Next up, Lecce takes on Fiorentina Thursday on ESPN. All right, thank you, gang. And uh, we hit for the two-minute warning with 157. The Dallas Cowboys have two timeouts, trying to work their way at least into field goal range. It'll be third down and four at Redskin 42-yard line. I think if you if you pass in this situation, you're the Cowboys. I think you're thinking of a possession-type pass, and that would be either Jason Witten or Keyshawn Johnson. That's that thought on that second down. They would have got Keyshawn. You know, or do you or do you go to a run? I mean, run the ball to Julius Jones, you know, and get a a, a fourth and short because you're in a, a two down set here. Third down and four. This isn't your run. No, nope, out of the shotgun. Look down here. There's no one covering Keyshawn down here in the bottom of the screen. Now he finds a defender on him. That's just gonna look the other way. And Clayton, does he make the catch? He got popped. No. Sean Taylor dislodged the football. I'll say. Incomplete fourth and Sean Taylor, the safety, whacked him. Sean Taylor really came up on that one. You're gonna see Patrick Creighton. He's the, he's the middle receiver. He's right in this group here. And you see, he cut under control to catch that hook. And Sean Taylor, the safety, just comes up and unloads him. Holy man. Wow. You talk about launching. He launched eight and halfway back to where he came from. So now it's fourth and four at the 50 yard line. This down can be the game. Let's go throws. And they will not convert. And now Dallas will have to take its timeouts on defense. That tackle is made by Harris. Terry Glenn made the catch, 148. They have one timeout. Can't quite run the clock out, but come close. That thing, you know, I always say on third down that you have to run your pattern beyond the first down mark. Now watch Terry Glenn there compared to the yellow line. You see, he's on this side of the yellow line. You have to, I mean, they don't know where the yellow line is, but that first down marker, you have to get up over that. On third down, I think, but on fourth down, I know you have to. You're compelled to. They can't. They can stop the clock twice. They can stop it two times. So they are going to get the ball back if they don't give up a first down. 39-yard line. They're going to give it a turn. And he's going to get tackled on the 43-yard line, and that's the first of their two remaining timeouts. One to go. The Redskins offense, nothing through the first three and a half quarters tonight. And then those two big bombs, and of course those two fourth down conversions, and one of the plays, of course, was the 25-yard the run by Drew Nell. On and, third down. and the other thing that impressed me is how calm Joe Gibbs has been. You know, you know, I said that there was, nothing was going right for him. I mean, he couldn't run the ball. He couldn't throw the ball. They were kind of moving on him. And then, boom, he just kind of hung in there. Brought that up before. Parcells 7-7 seven, seven and 0. Oh, and he led by 13 or more points any time during the fourth quarter. In jeopardy right now. Second down and 6 from the 43-yard line. And here's Portis, and he's going to get wrapped up at the 45-yard line, and that's Dallas's final timeout. So now they're in a situation where if Washington gets a first down, the game's over. If they don't, they're going to have to punt, and Dallas will get the ball back with no timeouts. And I think that this is one of the things that you would like to say, you know, a bootleg would be good here, some kind of play-action pass but you don't want to stop the clock so therefore if you're the redskins you almost have to run the ball bill parcells and we mentioned it before talking when we saw him in austin yesterday as well about how you know the winds are nice but the losses are worse than ever and this would go down as, as, as one of the all-timers because as we say he's never been in this position to blow that sort of a lead in the fourth quarter and you know they were they looked like they had the game under control just about the whole game but the only thing they weren't getting the points you know you go back to the beginning of the game they miss a field goal 
They have to settle for a field goal. You know, that when they had their opportunities, they didn't put enough points up. Squandered chances. Here's your ball game right here for Dallas. If Washington gets a first down, it's over. And Portis will not get it. So the Cowboys are going to get the ball back under a minute after the punt. And Groom will come in to kick, and this will be Groom's eighth punt of the night. Jerry's on the field. Did you see that play? That's a Joe Gibbs play. That was a counter try. You know, he needed to play. He had to get a first down. So he went back to what he knows best. And watch this. The counter, you see the two pulling here. Portis counters to the left and tries to follow in there to the right. The Cowboys probably play that as well as anyone. And it was countered. And now the Redskins will run the clock all the way down. They even take a delay a game at this point. With a punt from near midfield. And they will. So they eat up all of the time they can, which takes us down to 50 seconds. And Groom will be punting when play resumes to Creighton. Right, and the clock will start again at the snap of the ball. And then it, it, will, it will stop with the end of the punt return. Chain possession. Last year, the Redskins thought they had the game won here, and the Cowboys, on a pass to Creighton, came from behind to win at the end. And Creighton will have another opportunity to make a big impact. He'll run back to punt. Clock starts now. And it's a short end over end kick, bouncing at the 25, and it's a pretty good bounce for Dallas. A good bounce for the Redskins. The, 21, the, clock right. going. the clock is still going, and the one thing about Dallas is that that took 14 seconds total off the clock. So Washington in no hurry to down it. And now Drew Bledsoe will start from the 21 yard line and try to get Quartet into position for a game winning field goal. And again, you're not going to do that in one play. So Sean Payton holding plays, Drew Bledsoe throwing, and you have to kind of think in terms of. You know, a couple of 20-yard passes as compared to a 70-yard pass. Out of the shotgun for Drew Bledsoe. Skins by one. First six seconds, no timeouts. Four-man rush to the outside. Incomplete and short. Intended for Glenn. Drew Bledsoe in his fourth quarter has thrown a couple of uh, hoppers in there, hasn't he? That one was short, like you said. Remember earlier, he had Keyshawn Johnson down here for a, a uh, first down, and he threw the ball into the ground. You know, I guess, you know, heat, you know, you're talking about heat taking a toll on linemen and pass rushers and that, but it can also probably take a toll on quarterbacks. Always. Second down and 10. Bledsoe is 19 of 31. The 25 yards. Rushing five times. And that is juggled and not caught on the Redskins side as Keyshawn Johnson can't handle it. Matt Bowen playing in place of the injured Pearson Prelo with the coverage. It'll be third down. Now, this is the thing Keyshawn can do so well is, is use his body again to shield, but he just needed a little more room. He was too close to the sideline, and he never was able to keep going. Had he run that from a slaughter or inside the numbers, he would have had a chance at that one. So it's third and ten, still at the 21-yard line, still in the shotgun. And it's a low snap. Lepso picking it up. Five seconds. It's up at the 42-yard line. Now they got to get up there and down it. Witt make, or Glenn makes the catch. Now Bledsoe's going to have to spike the ball. Clock running 12 seconds, and he spikes it right here. So you have 10 seconds to try to get into field goal range and have clock stop as well. How about that imposure by Drew Bledsoe? I mean, wow. he fumbled that snap, and then, then he was able to get the ball under control, look up field, find his guy, and get it to him. 52 yards, the career long for Cortez. Well out of range right now, and the clock is the enemy. Going to pick up a lot of yardage and get it out of bounds. And Bledsoe's going to swing it, and that's incomplete, intended for Patrick Creighton. And now you're down to one last play, barring a pass interference call, which could also set up a field goal. And the and the game can't end on a on a defensive penalty. 
Jerry Jones may need something here. You have one play, and like you say, we're not talking about pitching anymore. We're not talking about field goal range anymore. And you have to score a touchdown. Third down and 10. The Redskins have three guys in the lead because they're on 20 yard line. And that's the way the ball will end. And I'll tell you, we have seen some improbable games in these years. This was all 13-0 games, but this would rank right up there in terms of improbability. And for Jerry Jones and for Bill Parcell, that's about as big as it gets. The Redskins have lost 14 out of 15. And Joe Gibbs came in here and like everything was against him. Back told me last night, he said that they're treating it like we're a homecoming team. Yeah, they have the, you know, the triplets going into the ring of honor. An improbable and dramatic Redskins victory in Dallas. On the night, they honored the triplets and put them to the ring of honor. The Redskins break a long losing streak at the hands of the Cowboys. They do it by overcoming a 13-0 fourth quarter deficit. Two Mark Brunell bombs to Santana Moss in the fourth quarter. When it's Tyree crew, ESPN crew, I'm Mark Brown. So long for now. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the world leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Persistent Brendan Fowler is being used by Carlton Tradebait. Is he better off somewhere else? Sydney would be fantastic. Speaking of Sydney, the Swans, this is the Eagles. Swan, Swan, Swans. West Coast Jazz. Oh, you're just uh, saying that'd be you commercial. Mercury. That'll do it. I'm Russell Barber. Good luck to both teams this weekend. And I'm Skekovy Chain. You know it makes sense. Cheer, cheer the red and the white. Honor the name by day and by night. Every day is ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Yeah, yeah. Driven deep to right field. Going back, Gibbons looking up. See ya. A walk-off home run for Bubba Crosby. The Yank do indeed walk off a winner and a muddy AL Central series providing some very stiff competition, Neil, for Monday night's football doubleheader. Oh, yes, Scott. Red Sox in Tampa and White Sox at home serving up a pair of rallies. But could they pull off the win? Find out on SportsCenter. Right now. This is SportsCenter. Emotions running high. New York, New Orleans playing at home on the road. G-Men not doing the same any favors. Skins and boys renew their rivalry. A former twosome coming up big, but with time running out, could D.C. strike twice down in Dallas? Plus, a huge White Sox lead suffering a major collapse. Could the Red Hot Indians serve up another late inning rally in Chicago? <laughs> Two. First up, Cowboys hosting the Redskins. Dallas has beat them 14 of the last 15. Hotter than a fox in a forest fire. First quarter, Mark Brunel, first drive. Third and eight. And the Dats get dipped. That win. Zach Brunel knocks the Redskins out of field goal range. Take another look how it was set up. We put the arrow on the rookie. DeMarcus Wary manhandles Liddell Betts. And win says, I'm in. Redskins forced to punt. Cowboys defense cruising. They lead 3-0 at the half. At the half, the triplets enter the ring of honor. Irvin, Aikman, and Emmett Smith. Three great Cowboys honored. Hugs all around. Back to the ball game. Awkward man hug. <laughs> Dallas, first and 10 on their 30. Julius Jones. Handoff. Back to Drew Bledsoe, who's going to Terry Glenn. Who is wide open. 
70-yard touchdown on the flea flicker, a little trickeration, and we flash back legally to the last time these two teams were on Monday Night Football. It was last September. Go there with me. Fourth quarter, Vinny Testaverde, Richie Anderson, and it's Terry Glenn, TG for the TD. That would lead to a Cowboys 21-18 win. Back to reality, and one more look. There goes gravity. Bledsoe, big time. 70 yards, Dallas up and nothing after the extra point. Bill Parcells, 50 is 7 0 when his team is led by at least 10 to 10 in the fourth quarter. How about 57 and they're up 13 plus points? But here come the skins. They've looked horrible up till now. Third and 27 on their 21 and Burnell. Oh, the pray you dub for 25. Next play, fourth and two. Brunel orders the flood. Jake Grant, 20 yard game and a first down. Same drive, fourth and 15. Brunel says Santana Moss, you run the down, out, and down, and I am going to find you, brother. Touchdown, first touchdown by the Redskins in nearly two full games. 13 7 after the extra point, ensuing drive for the Cowboys. Third and eight, 46. Bledsoe, the key, Keyshawn Johnson, first down. Well, we got a hanky and we've got a holding penalty on Bozella. Tell us what half the punt. Redskins get the ball back. 2.44 to go. First and 10. Brunel, shotgun. Santana Moss again. Speed kills. The Aaron Glenn and Roy Williams. Daniel Snyder, he's up in the Snyder box. He's ecstatic. Dallas not so much. Redskins up by one. Another look at this one. Moss splits the corner. Glenn and the safety. Roy Williams can't get over. That is a top play nominee. Two minutes left. Third and four for the boys. Bledsoe, Patrick Creighton, absolutely nailed by Sean Taylor. Not ruled a catch. Take another look. It's a top five nominee. And it'll leave a bruise. And this will leave a bruised eagle. Bledsoe, fourth down. Glenn, well, if you need, if you got four and four, you better run more than three yards. Cowboys can't find the magic end. And look at Joe Gibbs. Oh, wow, this is better than NASCAR. Redskins, the improbable win. A Yogi Bear, it ain't over until it's over game. Bill Parcells had just three 2-0 starts in his 18 seasons as a head coach. Uh, this may be the toughest one to swallow, though. Cowboys at San Francisco Sunday. Redskins with the bye, so more willing to talk this one up. Guys hung in there. Shows the character of this team. Never quit, and it uh, wasn't pretty, you know, and, and we struggled there for about four and a half, or three and a half quarters, and uh, we got some big plays. I got to tell you, I just... Kind of, kind of takes your breath away. Uh, I can't, uh, I think it's one of the ones I'll, uh, I think it, one of the great moments for me in sports, that was it. And uh, I'll appreciate it uh, forever. I told our guys going into this, it was uh, a Monday night with everything wrapped up in this. Uh, obviously it was one of those opportunities you get in a lifetime uh, where you're big underdogs and everything. I was really proud of our team. The Redskins couldn't do anything on offense most of the game. Seven punts, two turnovers on their first nine possessions. But then when they looked like it was over, they went over the top on a pair of fourth quarter plays. And just like that, they win the game. Or the Cowboys lose the game. These losses like this can carry over if you let them. That's what I told the team. Because these, these kind of big disappointments like this, when you thought you had the game in hand, which we didn't have enough lead in hand. But uh, that's the way the National Football League is. You got to finish it, and we didn't finish it tonight. If you don't play the whole game, you're going to get beat. I mean, that's that's just uh, that's the way it works. Um, uh, you know, and offensively, you know, we had chances earlier in the game to kind of put it out of reach. Uh, uh, and had we done that, then uh, then we'd be sitting here talking about this. The only other time Bill Parcells had blown a 13-point lead at home was in '99 when the Jets hosted the Colts. Both games resulted in one-point losses. Coach Parcells has lost three games that he led by more than 13 points, but they all came on the road. People on the East Coast waking up and going, what? Sean Salisbury joins us now for about 55 minutes. Let's be honest, this game was a dog baby. Then one of the more remarkable finishes in a storied, storied rivalry. Sean, simple question, how'd the Redskins do it? Redskins, 60 minutes, Cowboys didn't. I know it's cliche. Mm -hmm. Mark Brunel made two huge plays with his arm and a couple with his feet, and they came at the right time, and the Cowboys' coverage was awful and inexcusable. Have a look now. Aaron the corner is going to expect help from Roy Williams because he's playing outside leverage. What's Brunel do? Makes the great pitch. Fourth and 15, are you kidding me? See how Glenn's waiting for the outcut, waits for help. Right there, he's got the inside, does Moss, and Roy Williams there. And remember Michael McDonald? He's not there, Roy Williams. I'm going to be there. <laughs> Up and over. 
gets him right back in. And are you kidding me? We're going to do it again. We know Moss is fast. You let Brunel stand in there and throw it. You cannot let the guy. It's the same play. Great throw by Brunel. Williams doesn't get over and lets him get inside. That's inexcusable. Look how far off they're playing. Pat, when you're doing this, what do you say? Always keep everybody in front of you. You can't give up the home run to one of the faster guys. But Brunel had not even the ability to throw this good a deep ball. That's a pretty good throw late for him. Great throw. And he kept playing and kept playing. Mark hasn't played well. He played well enough to give to a 2-0 start. Santana becomes just the fifth player in the last 20 years to have two touchdown catches of at least 30 yards in the fourth quarter. And Sean, when you Man. think about when you think about comebacks yep. in this great rivalry, almost all of them belong to the Cowboys. The Redskins get this one in spite of the fact that they were shut out for 56 plus minutes. They didn't look like a Joe Gibbs team because they were penalized 12 times. They're clearly a flawed football team, but still 2-0 in the NFC East. They've got to buy. What are they addressing during this time off? Sitting atop the NFC East side of the Giants. Bodies healthy and focus on things you're doing really well. And Scott, there's defensively, they're doing things great. Some could argue this is as good a defensive football team as there is in the league. They haven't started to run the football great yet, and they will with Portis. Quarterback situation may be an issue all year, but tonight, uh, Brunel took care of his business in the Monday night football game. But Scott, I think what they do is you sit back, get healthy, take a few days off, mm -hmm. and say, hey, we're 2 0. We haven't played great football, we're 2 0. Defense is going to carry him. And in the NFC, you could make the playoffs win an eight. All right, let's flip the script. You've got Bill Parcells, 77 and 0, when yep. leading by 30 in the fourth quarter. So for all that euphoria we just saw the Redskins, take me inside the Cowboy locker room and paint the picture. What's the effect of this loss? Well, Bill's going to try to make it positive in the locker room after this game as he did. But tomorrow when you're watching tape, they're not going to like it on Monday when they got to deal with Bill Parcells because a loss like this can be devastating on the football field for your team because sometimes you could it linger for three or four weeks and it can cost you. And Scott, it's amazing how three or four plays in a game cost you. They cost him in the last five minutes. Bill will preach play 60 minutes. They did not do that in the Monday night game. This is devastating for them when you're chasing Philadelphia and two other NFC East teams that are both 2-0. and And one more time, the Skins do get a bye. Dallas now has two games in a row on the West Coast as they try to mm. shake this off and move on. Sit tight. Get some thoughts on the other Monday night game in just a minute. You got it. More NFL on the way. Inside Sports Center. Giants making the Saints feel right at home in New Jersey. And then they started playing football. G-Men, man enough on Monday night. Coach Jim Hazlitt, this is a home game for the Giants, and we'll leave it that way. They were not pleased to have to play in York against Giants, but hey, they did get plenty of support, and that's a great sight seeing them run out as a team, hand in hand. Joe Horn gets the chance to meet former President George Bush Sr. before the game went. Horn was fired up. Hey, big picture, minor inconvenience for them compared